The Orlando Thunder's roster features an arsenal of players with NFL experience. But the leader of the league's highest scoring offense is a player who has yet to get his shot in the NFL. Quarterback Scott Mitchell backs up Dan Marino with the Dolphins, but this spring his talents have bolstered a different Florida team to number one. The Thunders won five straight and they're averaging nearly 30 points a game. The mastermind is no stranger to Florida football. Head coach Galen Hall has turned the Thunder around from a year ago. Last week they clinched their division and the team's first playoff berth. right now the hottest team in the World League and a team hoping to take a championship at the end of the season. They take on the defending champions, the London Monarchs, in World League action tonight. Hi again, everybody. I'm Brad Nessler. Welcome to Orlando. Tonight, we've got two teams going in very opposite directions. We know we'll have a new World League champion this year. The London Monarchs breezed through their schedule last year, 11-1, took the World Bowl in a shutout. Now they're really struggling at 1-5-1. And right now, the Orlando Thunder is the hottest team in the league. They think they're the heir to that World League crown as they head toward the playoffs. They bring in my partner, John Robinson. John, here's one team going in the right direction and uh, gearing up for the playoffs, and another team is really trying to find a little self-respect here. They know they're not going to postseason. Well, what a difference a year makes, Brad. It's Orlando now that's doing all the things that winners do. They're, they have a balanced offense. They run the ball well. They pass it well. They're playing good defense, and their turnover ratio was a plus 13. London, on the other hand, is trying to stave off disaster. The Orlando Thunder right now has a hot quarterback, too, and Scott Mitchell. I remember when we did the game up in Montreal, the only game they lost, by the way, in the final second. She said, this is a kid that really could be a star in this league, and you were right. And he's going to go on and be an effective quarterback in the NFL. He's uh, done an outstanding job for them. They, they lead throwing the ball, a lot of short passes, and then they follow with the run. Scott Mitchell is an outstanding player. Mitchell and Dave Archer for Sacramento, probably the two hottest quarterbacks right now in the World League. A guy that's a defending MVP in the World League, Stan Gelbaugh. And he turned that into a starting job for a couple of games with the Phoenix Cardinals in the NFL last year. But Stan has had all kinds of trouble. You can't blame just him, but he's not even going to start tonight. Everybody loves the second string quarterback, and we're going to see Fred McNair tonight get his chance to be the starter. And I think he'll do a good job. He doesn't have a lot of experience, but he's a good athlete with a good arm, and hopefully he can give London a lift. Well, we've got a couple of guys that we think will lift a few ball carriers and a few receivers tonight wearing helmet cam as Ricky Williams will wear it for the London Monarchs right there, number 56. And Rick Andrews for the Orlando Thunder, another guy that really gets around the ball, will have it on for the Thunder. The Thunder, are they going to be sold to a different group here in Orlando? That's the rumor this morning. And Raj Bethal, their current owner, is going to be with our Michael Barkan when we come back to Orlando in a moment. Well, you're stuck here. Where is here? This is Lake Edna. The World League on USA is brought to you by Olympus. Never miss another O. Buy Kentucky Fried Chicken. Nobody's cooking like today's KFC. And buy Budweiser, the king of beers. With that clean, crisp, cold taste, nothing beats a bud. Getting set for the Orlando Thunder and the London Monarchs. Let's get out of the field to Michael Barkan. Brad, Thunder management and Thunder fans startled this morning when they read the Orlando Sentinel. The headline read, Bethal poised to lateral thunder. And in the article, it detailed team owner Raj Bethal's plan to sell the thunder after a meeting tomorrow morning with the prospective new ownership. Well, Raj Bethal joins me right now. And your reaction to that article, sir, is? It's totally untrue. I haven't had any meeting set up. 
and I have no idea where this news coming from. How about moving the team? The article also mentioned you might want to move the team to California. We are completely committed to Orlando, and this is the best town in the league, and we are going to stay here, and this team belong in this town. It's going to be here. Well, that's good news, I'm sure, for Orlando. How are you going to bolster the attendance, though? It's been a little lacking. Well, it takes time. This is a new league, and every week by week, league is improving, and we are 6-1 and one team. We are Eastern champion. We are going all the way to winning the world championship. All right, Brad, you heard it here first. Back to you. All right. No sale. Raj said it all as you look out at the two coaches. Galen Hall does have his team, the North American East champions at 6-1. and one. And Ray Wilsey, who was defensive coordinator last year under Larry Kennan, who's gone on to be Tom Flores' top eight in Seattle, has struggled through a 1-5-1 and one campaign. London, not having won since their opener, they have lost five and tied one. The Thunder, five straight wins, and they're going to get the football first. Phil Alexander's got it teed up. And week eight of World League play. Set from the Citrus Bowl in Orlando. Back deep, Gratis Bell and Stacy Simmons for the green clad Orlando Thunder. And here we go. Gratis Bell, five yards deep, decides to touch it down right there and Scott Mitchell and his offense will go to work from the 20 yard line. Mitchell's numbers on the season 10 touchdowns and only 4 interceptions offensively joining Scott Mitchell for Orlando here's how it looks. Daryl Clack in the backfield. Titley the tight end. The wide receivers Bell, Simmons and Joe Howard Johnson as much of the time you'll see a 4 wide out group for the Thunder. Cunningham Aronson, Lasso, Rose and Crafts across the front wall on the offensive line for Orlando they are number one in the league in scoring. 202 points through seven weeks. And they're set to work from their own 20-yard line. Mitchell throws the out on first down. Got his man a pickup of about five before he is swarmed under by the London Monarchs defense. And Roland Smith made the hits. Here's the defense, Shannon, Miller, and Danny Lockett moves down to defensive end to get more pass rush. The linebacking core, Kirksey Moore, Ricky Williams wearing helmet cam, and Ricky Shaw, the right outside backer. Smith, Faggins, Dodge, and Crossman. Much of the time you'll see a nickel defense in there for the Monarchs due to the pass-happy attack of the Orlando Thunder. Who got almost six yards on their first play. And as Scott Mitchell looks at that wristband with the plays listed, he's got a second down and five. from just outside the 25-yard line. Mitchell got it in and out of the hands of his intended receiver, Granis Bell, and a nice hit put on by Urban Smith on the corner. Grant Orlando wants to start the football game with that control passing game and then get to the run. They've thrown the first two times. One of them was complete and one wasn't. The second one certainly was contested. Smith comes up there and is, makes the play right away. The ball goes through the receiver's hands. Orlando, 43% on their third down conversions. Here's their first attempt, third and five, and they'll give it to Clack, and he's got a big hole and a first down. Daryl Clack out across the 35, giving 11 yards and a first down to the Thunder. Dan Crossman made the tackle. They have a very simple running game, but they spread you out with those four wide receivers, and there just isn't enough people to defend against the run. At least that's their theory. They also mix that with an excellent bootleg game uh, that Scott Mitchell executes very well. So out to the 36-yard line. First down, Thunder. And Mitchell on first down. Wants to swing it out of the backfield to Clack. Got him on the run across the 40. And a nice open field stop as Clack got out near the 42-yard line. Dedrick Dodge came up from his safety position to make the hit. Both Daryl Clack, number 22, and Roger Vick, who we'll see tonight, number 49, a little bit banged up, but Clack looked good early. Here's the screen pass. We get to the guard and the tackle out in front of him. Clack gets the ball up the field. This is what Orlando wants to do all night, and they're off to the right kind of start. It's a nice situation. Second okay. down and four. And it's Clack with another first down run as he skips out to the 49-yard line. Let's listen in to Galen Hall. 50, 50. Orlando has a unique way of calling plays. They number they number the plays and then list them on their wrist. You'll see Scott checking his wrist. See what number is what is 50? Okay, now they got 50. Earlier in the year they told us they had them listed zero through fifty. So maybe this is the last one on the list. 
Here it is. End around. Drop ball. Let's see if they can find the handle. Finally, Willie Davis does, but he loses about nine yards, and I don't think we'll hear 50 again for a while. 50 has been scratched, Brad, <laughs> officially right now. Well, on first down, that's a loss of 10 yards, and that's kind of kind of tough for them. But again, you got to try those things, and around midfield is where they do. It. Here's the fake. The handoff to the wide receiver coming back around. He just drops the ball. Wide receivers are used to having that thing spiral into him, not headed to him. Willie may be a little bit rusty. Just came off IR this week. Now it's second and 19. And they go to the shotgun. And a four wide receiver group. And Mitchell might go. be changing things right now. Here. They found it, found it, found it. Hot, hot. Mitchell with time. Oh, shit. Threw it nowhere. Had a man deeper and one more shallow. Grannis Bell was deep, and Joe Howard Johnson was underneath. Give me a dash. And then went you right between dash? the two. Yep. Back to blood. Back to blood. We're going to see a good contest between Rick Cunningham and Danny Lockett. The Orlando left tackle Cunningham uh, is up against the best pass rusher on London's team. That time he did a really nice job. Lockett's an excellent pass rusher. He led the league last year with 13 and a half sacks, and there's Rick Cunningham, the big fella. 3.05 out of Texas A&M. A lot of NFL teams. Our thinking looks pretty good in this World League season. Here comes a blitz on third and long. Mitchell bought himself some time. Got his man on the run, and it's Davis. And that one did spiral in. First down at the 38-yard line. Brad, Scott Mitchell is an excellent quarterback on the run, particularly out going to his left, which, is, you know, he's a left-handed quarterback. And it's easier. But watch him here now. They get a, a, a rush up the field. Good push by the receiver. Now he comes back to the football. Scott does a great job of putting the ball right on the money, and he does just a just an excellent job with that. Okay. About third and 19, he got okay. 23 yards. First down at the 37. And this is Roger Vick. And Vick, who's been running very well as of late, picked up good yardage inside before the Monarchs can bring him down. The sing in the single back offense, they just block straight ahead, and we get a look at, at Vick making a nice cutback. Starts left, cuts back to the middle, uses his blocking. And as long as they can do, they can mix that run. With Mitchell throwing the football the way he can, they have a good offense. Now they've got two backs in there. Somebody's going to have to come out. Vic comes out and Clack goes in. They came in third and fourth Second in the World League in we rushing. Go. Here we, go. we get a look from Ricky Williams. Watch it, watch it. Yeah. Hot, hot. Mitchell out in the flat to Clack with blockers in front. All the way to the 16-yard line. 17 more yards in the Thunder's offense in gear. Again, a repeat of that screen pass that we saw earlier. Just try to get the defense to back off and cover the four wide receivers and just get the simple swing pass to Clack, who got the ball upfield nicely. And he Watch how quickly he dodge. delivers it. Accurate throw. And here Clack's got a big guy right in front of him who misses this guy. <laughs> He's like, he got him out there, but he didn't help him very much. Dedrick Dodge paid the price for that. Open field tackle, though. He's still down. Well, he, he had to hit. We'll check on him when we come back. 10-03 to go first quarter. No score. The Orlando Thunder took the opening kickoff of their own 20 and have driven 64 yards in 10 plays, almost five minutes off the clock. John, they're doing everything they want to do. Yeah, they've come out and just pretty much uh, gone exactly by the script. London's going to have to do something to disrupt that short passing game, or they're going to see it all night, and they'll never stop it. They saw Dedrick Dodge on the sideline, went off under his own power. Clack on a little inside track. They only got a couple to the 14-yard line. Ricky Shaw, the linebacker, in on the stop. Why you? Yeah. No, let's throw how about uh, Z under? Okay, Z under flush, 18. Flash! 18. 18, flush! Scott, 18. Well, we know it's a 18. pass, Coach. Flush, 18! <laughs> now let's 18, throw is what he said. He had enough of that running. 14. Now flush is the four wide receivers. that he yelled flush to get everybody in there. Rip, Simmons rip. and Davis to the top of your screen. I think he thinks the blitz is coming, and a blitz is coming. Bell. Cut. And Johnson the other way, and it's a crossing pattern to Bell. 
Z under is this the the inside receiver runs deep in the end zone and the outside man comes underneath him. Scott Mitchell does a nice job of just being very accurate with the ball. When you throw the ball short, you've got to put it on the money. The receiver can't adjust much to it. And you see there, he doesn't have to. Now he's got to just keep him getting killed in the middle in there, which it almost got the ball. That's the tough thing about being a small receiver, catching the ball in the middle. Third and one. clack has got it to a first and goal at the three. Brad, this offensive line of Orlando has really come on. We saw them earlier in the year, and they weren't anywhere near as physical as they are now, particularly over on the left side. Here we look at the linebacker trying to take that group on. You see the guard come right back, keeps the linebacker blocked, and knocks the linebacker right out of there. First. Ricky Williams did not like that play. First and goal at the three. Simmons in motion. The give to Vick straight ahead. Very close. Again, the offensive line has to get credit. That that ball carrier uh, come, come, comes right down to the one. We're looking, going to see it coming right at the helmet camp. Here we see what it's like to, boom, here's the ball coming right at him. Linebacker gets a shot at him that time. The guard did not get back on him. And he gets buried about, what's that, about 800 pounds on top of the breath? So. Ricky Williams in helmet cam made the tackle at about the one foot line. What the waggle! There's Ricky. Ricky Williams saying, watch the waggle. They're not going to waggle, Ricky. They're coming right at you. I think I'd watch out for Vic at 240, Flax 215, and Mitchell's the biggest guy on the field. That's and he got in. Touchdown, Orlando. I'm not kidding when I say he's the biggest guy on the field. He took that 6-6 six -six and got just enough 6 nothing Thunder. Well, that's not the way they wanted it to happen. They needed to disrupt that offense. A lot of teams make a script. Here's the, here you see Brad Mitchell just giving that spelt 230 pounds up and over everybody and into the end zone. Quarterback's got it on a quarterback sneak's got to give just a little chance for his offensive line to get momentum. You saw it there, and he was in by a solid inch there. <laughs> and he gets back out of there. Excellent drive for Atlanta. Tracy Bennett in for the point after. Ray Criswell will hold. The extra points have been kind of an exciting play for the Thunder. You see why. Criswell throws. Oh my Got God. his man, and he <laughs> dropped it. Boy, they can make an extra point exciting. I'll tell you that much. Rick Andrews, the linebacker, came out of there. They've had all kinds of trouble with the snap in placement from Tintley, who's doing the long snapping. And here you're going to see one a little high. Griswell played it as well as he could, but couldn't get the two. Six, nothing, Thunder. We'll be right back. The Mark Lighting 7. Back in Orlando at the Citrus Bowl, where the Thunder's already scored. And... Ricky Williams has done his job defensively, was involved in the collision on the touchdown by Scott Mitchell. You'll see and hear that after this kickoff by Tracy Bennett. Back deep, Bernard Ford and Curtis McManus for the London Monarchs. Short kick taken by Mel Waters, one of the up men. And he's out at about the 29-yard line. Let's take you down to a goal line defense. You try to tackle Scott Mitchell. Let's listen in. Look at the feeling that you get there of the offensive line just coming at Ricky Williams that time. Hard to play linebacker when the offensive line is that aggressive. The Monarchs on offense when we come back. It's now Tuesday night fight. June 9th at 9. Fred McNair at the controls at quarterback tonight for the London Monarchs. There's his numbers in relief duty all season long for Stan Gelbaugh, who's been struggling. So McNair trying to put a little spark in the Monarchs offense, led by Garrett and Alexander, Popson, Sargent, and Ford. Powell, Berardelli, Shipley, Jones, and Theo Adams across the front wall for the London Monarchs, who have had all kinds of trouble in the first quarter this year. They've been outscored 41-3 to in the first quarter. And after being one of the highest scoring teams run, last run, season, run, run, only 117 run. points in their seven games this year. Run, run, two, two, two. 
You look through the helmet cam of Rick Andrews wearing it for Orlando defensively. First down of the 29. Play action. McNair throws on the run, and it batted in the air and almost picked off. Nice job defensively by Malcolm Frank, the left corner, number 20. And let's look at that Thunder defense. And they've made some changes up front. Dunbar, Cilio, Wyatt, and Pressbury in a four-man front, normally a 3-4 defense. Dixon, Andrews, and Witkowski, the linebacking core. And Frank, you just saw make the play. Glenn Rogers, Ephraim Thomas in at free safety, and Todd Crum, the strong safety. Second and 10 for Fred McNair. And the London offense was 7.08 to go first quarter. And the Monarchs already trailing 6-0. Jeff Alexander, not much there either. Got across the 30 and then ran into a wave of lime green, led by Pressbury, 72, and Rogers, 26 from the secondary. Pressbury did a, just an excellent job of playing off the tight end's block and was there, and there was no place for uh, Alexander to go. Monarchs have really struggled with their ground game, John. That's been one of the sticklers for them on offense. And the worst thing when you don't run the ball very well, you tend to give up on it quickly in a game, go away from it before you really should. Third down and eight. Not a running situation here. McNair waits and goes across the middle and got it to the 45 to Bernard Ford, his favorite receiver. 14 yards and a first down London. Well, that's a huge play for the quarterback. It gives him a little confidence. He was accurate, put the ball on the money. Bernard Ford was covered. The safety man had to come up and really contested this play. Here you see Bernard Ford come up. The quarterback staying outside. He comes into the middle. He's got to work back to the ball. You see the safety man there almost makes it, has a chance. Boy, McNair put a lot on that ball. There wasn't a lot of room for error. Three wide receiver group for him this time, and Garrett on a wing, but they go to the ground and they got across midfield with Alexander to the 49 and Jeff got about five and a late flag flies in. Well, that's what they needed to do, but that's not what they needed to have happen. They didn't need the holding penalty. There it is. Let's check in with Michael Barkan. Bar Brad, Brad, Ray Criswell hasn't played uh, quarterback since high school, Orange Park High School, but you paid it a few moments ago on the conversion. What happened there? Uh, the ball was a little high and a little bit hard. I probably should have had it and uh, just had to improvise. And uh, still a decent pass, but we didn't come up with it. But we'll have to get it next time. Now, last week you had the same kind of problem. Tracy had a run it in, and you were successful last week. Yeah, he played a little running back, and, uh, you know, we were successful. So, and we're winning. That's all that matters. The problems with the long snapper, his name is Mike Titley. they got to fix that. All right, thanks, guys. <laughs> Mike Titley wants to fix it, too, I'll tell you. Yeah, Mike Titley loves that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Now it's first and 20 with a holding ball. Backed up to the 35-yard line. Andrews thinking about a blitz. Now backs out of it. We might have a flag on this one, too. Nope. Screen pass to Garrett. And Garrett got it to the 44-yard line before Willie Wyatt and Glenn Rogers ran him down. Judd comes in as the number two receiver in the World League after leading the league last season with 71. There you see 42, make it now 43 on the year for Judd Garrett, who, of course, uh, brothers John and Jason both played for San Antonio last year in the World League. Second down and 10, they got 10 of it back. Just under five minutes to go, first quarter. Six, nothing, Orlando. comes a blitz on McNair. Tried to go to Ford and threw that one out of bounds. Well, I think he was well served in throwing that. The wide receiver was covered. Uh, Frank did a good job on him. Uh, this wasn't any place to go with the ball, and he had some pressure up the field at him. That's George Warhoff, the offensive coordinator, having a chat with the folks upstairs for the London Monarchs. And it's third and ten for Ray Wilson's uh, troops. Ray's been around football a long time. 37 years in the coaching profession. Third and 10. Here comes the all-out blitz. McNair never had a chance. Never had a chance. Witkowski and Thomas are there. When that many people come, it looked like about 13 were coming that time, and there's just too many to block. Quarterback's got to recognize that. And more importantly, the wide receiver has to recognize that. And he has to stop, throw the ball right now. And if he can get the ball off, sometimes there's huge games. But if you don't get it off, there's disaster. Red thought he was going down under a wave of Kiwis back there. 
And now they're going to bring everybody after Paul Alsbury, the punter. Now they back off. They have the return on. And he booms a punt. Joe Howard Johnson with a fair catch way back at the 15-yard line. Nice kick, 37 yards without a return. So London trailing by six. The Thunder out in front with 4.20 to go first quarter. Take keeping track of everything you John Robinson and Michael Barkan at the Citrus Bowl in Orlando, Florida on a beautiful night. Not so good for the London Monarchs so far. Trailing by only six, though, with 4.20 to go. Well, Brad, it'll be interesting to see if Orlando can put together that same kind of a drive if they have the patience. Sometimes you get a little greedy. You get off to that good a start, you come and say, well, let's get a big one here somewhere. Uh, let's see what happens. They went 80 yards in 15 plays the first time they had it. This time they'll have to go 85 if they're to put it in the end zone from their own 15-yard line. Mitchell, pump fakes, wants to go deep, but a stop and go to Bell. Bell comes back for it, and Crossman picks it off. Last year's World Bowl most valuable player, Dan Crossman, with the interception. And that gives it right back to the London offense. Well, there went that patience. <laughs> Here you go. It didn't take them very long to say, we're going to get up with the big one, and uh, it is so tempting. He fakes the out, and it's an out and up, and the safety just works his way over, and that ball's kind of, it looks like somebody shot it up in the air there, and it just <laughs> fell down, and Dan Grossman just made it, stood there and made the interception. Looks like a left fielder catching the pop fly. Right? That's Dan's first interception of the season, and it gives it back to his offense at the 47-yard line. Oh, he's so there with time and he goes deep and he's got a man open knocked down at the last instant by Todd Crum. Bernard Ford was out there but Crum made a nice play. Well he, he held on to the ball a little too long that was a two deep zone and, and the wide receiver was open from about 15 yards down the field to about 30 but he didn't get the ball there in time. Here we get a look at the coverage now. Watch, you'll see the corner kind of hang. Now, there's the hole. He's got to get the ball there to him. There's the safety coming over. You see that ball's in the air too long. That ball has to get up sooner. Nice job. The safety man, Todd Crump, gets up and knocks the ball down. Well, you're not kidding. Just a split second difference, or that could be a touchdown. Instead, it's second and ten. McNair tipped. Almost intercepted again. Malcolm Franks had his hands on a couple tonight. Well, Orlando is certainly being aggressive at the corner. Malcolm Frank is up there. He looks like he's the receiver. He jumped right in front of that thing, but he just couldn't hang on to it. Here you see him in front of it. Now you'll see the, the wide receiver come back and bat it down. That looks like the NBA playoffs there <laughs> trying to get to it. It's a good play by the wide receiver. you got to just keep it from being an interception. Now it's third and ten, London. Six DBs in for the Thunder. From the 47. McNair. Flags down. We might have a holding call. And McNair gets it to the 45-yard line. He got about eight yards on the scramble. But again, a flag down. And it is a holding call going against the London Monarchs. The second time tonight that's happened. Paul Berardelli might be the guilty party back there. It's the kind of thing that happens when things are when you're losing and you're having problems. He scrambles out and almost gets the first down, but then there's a hole. They seem to see that's Hendy Anisic, the umpire, an NFL umpire, who I've looked at for a lot of years. <laughs> As a coach, you hate umpires. I think they affect drives more than anything. everybody else. You don't worry about, but umpires, you you start to we know their names. The on the offense, number 60, 10-yard penalty, repeat third down. They call it on Theo Adams, the left tackle. Theo doesn't like the call. Ray Wilsey doesn't like it much either. Now they're third down and 20. They got to be careful not to not to let disaster uh, 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 befall them here. The way they punted the ball the first time, if they can get part uh, of it back and punt I the ball, they can be all right. Remember, they had an interception by Crossman at the 47. Now they're back at the 37 with that third and 20, staring at them with three and a half to play first quarter. there fires on the run Ford made the catch at the 41 yard line boy now that's a nice pass 22 yards when you're running for your life he had no protection at all he was running for his life and he found his guy and he came back and made a great play 
We're going to look at the receiver now. Uh, he does a great job of, of just keeping his feet inbound. Bernard Ford now. Excellent job, Bernard. And that ball was contested all the way. Bernard needed 20. He got 22 at the 41-yard line. There's his number, second in the league in receiving yardage, and he tacked 22 on there. First down to the 41. Alexander pops right at the line, and he'll go down for a loss. Pressberry and Crum there to meet him. Well, there wasn't much room in there, but they've got to keep they've got to keep attacking him straight at him. Alexander's a big back, and they've got to try to make something happen in there. Pretty soon, those blitzes start coming. Boy, the difference a season can make for the London Monarchs. Look at this total offense first. Now they're fourth. Point score, they were number one last year and have slipped to seventh. That defense from second to tenth and in points allowed, as we told you, they didn't give up much last year. And this year they have given up 162 points coming into this eighth game of the season. Second and ten. Here comes a blitz. McNair, they've got the right play. If Garrett can follow his blocking. And he got it down to the 31-yard line. Going to be close to a first down. They got a blitz that time, and the quarterback did a nice job. Freddie got, a, got the ball off to a, a reliable receiver. Judd Garrett's that kind of guy that just makes plays and keeps doing things for him. Here's the screen pass. The ball's right to him. A little slow getting started, but he gets up, uses his block as well, finds a crease, and holds on to the ball. Nice job. Veradelli third and one. got a nice block out in front for Garrett, who picked up nine. Third and less than a yard. Two tight ends, Popson and Harbor in there. And a dual backfield as well. Everybody in tight. On third and one. The give, Alexander, no! What a collision with Willie Wyatt. And also Carl Dunbar. Now decision time for Ray Wilsey. Well, it's the time now. I think Ray's got to go for this. It's fourth down. Uh, they've got nothing to lose, and they need the they need the impetus of. Uh, field goal, field goal, they're going goal, for the field goal. Field goal. Field goal. All right, there was some indecision. George Warhop, the offensive coordinator, and finally they get on the same page, and that means that Phil Alexander will come out. Surprising, Brad. When you're not coaching, you start yelling to go for it. Well, they gave Alexander a chance for a 48 and a 52-yarder last week, and he connected. Now they're asking him for 50 here. Penalty down. The Thunder's saying that they were drawn off. Let's see if that's the call, and if so, that might change the minds of everybody. Delay of game, so all of a sudden it's a 55-yard kick or it's a punt coming up. Well, that's another decision for Ray now. They're probably outside his range. They're coming back with either a... a they're going to punt it now. They're going to punt it now. Well, that's too bad. That's, again, the kind of things they've... They've had three penalties already in the first quarter. Yep. And they've done some pretty good things. I, I think Freddie McNair is off to a fine start. Just a kind of a rhythm that they just don't seem to have. Just when they've gotten it going, it's been the penalties that have stopped them dead in their tracks. And now Ellsbury sets the kick away. Joe Howard Johnson back at the 10, and it'll be a 10-man rush. He lays a high, lazy kick. This could be a pretty good punt. See how London covers it. Actually, it comes down a little bit earlier, I think, than uh, they were hoping for at the 17-yard line. That's where the Thunder will go to work. Next week, we've got more World League action for you. Barcelona and New York, New Jersey. And the Knights trying to work their way back into a possible playoff spot. Sacramento definitely thinks they can win the West. They might be the best team or the second best team in the World League. They'll take on Ohio. That's next Saturday night. 8 o'clock Eastern Time here on USA as the World League winds toward the playoffs in the World Bowl. And we'll be with you in Montreal on June 6th to bring you the championship. And the green-clad Orlando Thunder thinks they're the team that's going to be there. They've been talking about it all week. They already know they've got their division wrapped up. First down and Clack takes it ahead for a couple off the left side. Scott Miller, the nose tackle, made first contact. Well, Brad, we certainly haven't seen any of the give up that we thought we were we might see after last week's game in New York. London is here to play, and I think they they probably feel pretty good about the job the quarterback's doing at this point. We've come to the end of the first quarter. 
And the Orlando Thunder out in front. And the London Monarchs still struggling in the first stanza with only three points in the first quarter all year. Church Street, they're having fun downtown. We're having fun here at the Citrus Bowl. Second quarter coming up next. the other game going on tonight Sacramento surge out in front of Frankfurt big time 17 to nothing Sacramento trying to win the North American West goes to, into that one five and two and with the hottest player in the league in quarterback Dave Archer here in Orlando it is six to nothing there's the West Sacramento and San Antonio at five and two in Birmingham right on their heels the fire playing three home games in a row and they're still hoping for a wild card spot Mitchell Rolls and throws, and no, 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 what no, no, a catch. No, no. Nope, Titley didn't hold it. Got one hand out there and pulled it in, but it's incomplete. The bootleg we just saw from Scott Mitchell is a big part of the offensive attack from Orlando. We'll see that play again and again. That's their way of getting outside. They really don't run the football outside 39, well. 39, 39, 39, 39. Three man, three man. Well, we know 50 didn't work earlier. Now we're checking 39. <laughs> 39 is uh, the second and 10 play. Or third down and not, third down and 10 play. Roll, roll! Four wide outs. Hot, hot! Joe Howard Johnson in motion. Mitchell steps up. A lot of room in front. And here he goes. The slide at the 33. First down. 13-yard pickup for Scott Mitchell. I tell you what, for 6'6", 236, he can move pretty well, John. He sure can, and he's, he's got this kind of natural athletic ability. And he's also smart enough to say, I'm getting down as fast as I can. But those things drive defensive coordinators crazy. The quarterback that's willing to run the football can really be uh, make an important contribution. They give it to Clack off the right side, and Darrell Clack got it out to the 35-yard line. 41. 41. That's Bob Meshack, the defensive secondary coach of London. He's calling down to the coordinator saying, uh, just have it on, so have call it this defense, so this will stop it. He hopes. <laughs> Maybe. Yes. Second down and eight. And Mitchell will work from the shotgun. They're pointing at Ricky Williams, 56. He's wearing helmet cam. Mitchell loads and got it to the 45-yard line. First down, Willie Davis. Yeah, stay with him, baby. Stay with him. Edrick Dodge is there, but Davis has the first down. Again, Scott Mitchell is accurate throwing the football. That ball was right on the money for another first down, and now this patient drive that they executed the first time they had the ball is beginning to take shape again. They switch receivers at the last instant. Willie Davis comes off, maybe a little shake it up. Stacy Simmons comes in. He's got to do a quick check on that wristband to see what's going on. Nice play fake. Bootleg, got it out. Complete, another first down. This one's Chris Ford. Knocked out of bounds to the 44-yard line. Give him 11. Well, we said we were going to see it again, and here it is. This is basically their idea of the sweep play. They're going to run the ball inside, fake the run inside, and roll. Scott Mitchell around. He's very accurate, particularly rolling to his left. The short passing game, the quarterback must be accurate. We got a first down. John, you and I were talking about this today. Most teams run to set up the pass. It's not the case with the Thunder. Absolutely. Cover, cover. Mitchell, Wait, 7 of 11 for 79 go, 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 yards go. so far, but he has been intercepted go. once. Daryl Clack. Oh, what a hit by Dodge, but Clack kept on going. Edric Dodge put his hat on him, but Darrell Clack did a nice job to get it out to the 36-yard line. Where is Michael Barkham? We haven't seen him lately. Well, Brad, we started with helmet cam, of course, as you know. Then last week we introduced the Barkham, which is that what I'm now wearing. And we go to John Narciso, who is wearing fan cam. Yes. Now, now what's the point of fan cam? It gives the view from the fans' perspective, the view of the game. Now, what is the view right now for Orlando fans? Great. Yeah. Great. I, th I like this, Brad, because it, it can save the company money. You know what I mean? We'll, we'll both we'll work both angles. Fan Cam just gave you an idea of Scott Mitchell uh, kind of falling down, going back, and throwing one out incomplete intended for Daryl Clack. That is something else. Those Scott are the didn't good get fans. his feet out of the way fast no. enough. 
change it. Hold on. Oh, what is it? Oh, he got stepped yeah, on 47. coming out of there. 47. He's got 47. 47! And no doubt, fan cam's one of those good fans that Galen Hall talked about. He said, sometimes we don't fill this place up, but the ones we get are rowdy. And tonight, they have a big crowd on hand as well. 6-0, Orlando, third and three. They're four for four on third down conversions. Mitchell. And probably should have run with it that time. Urban Smith, closest man to the ball, the cornerback, number 21. Scott knew that. I'm sure as soon as he threw it, he would like to have had it back. He could have made the first down easily, but he doesn't want to establish too big a rushing uh, average. To start putting in those runs, and he doesn't want that. So London holds, and that will force uh, Ray Criswell punt. We will say one thing, that Orlando has installed a fake punt this week, and it is a passing play. And I don't know if you do it with fourth and three. It's not a bad spot on the field. We'll talk more about that when we come back. We've got a timeout with 11.49 to go first half. Thunder out in front by six. She'll be crazy. Two. Run right, run right. Rick Andrews, part of the punt team. The special teams huddle here in a punting situation for the Thunder. They've got a fourth down and three just outside the London 35. We thought this would be a good spot for a fake punt, but from what we heard from Rick Andrews' helmet, they are going to punt this ball. For the far corner, I think he got too much of it. Oh, maybe not. It landed on its point. Did it come back? No touchback. Oh, boy. Now we're going to have a little brouhaha from the Thunder. They thought they downed it at the one-foot line. Winfred Bryant down there did a nice job, and that part of Criswell's had some nice backspin. He'd like a chip shot like that boy, on the golf he, course. Would he ever? I think he just stepped on the line when he grabbed the ball. We get a chance to look at it. We get a chance to look at it. We'll let you make the judgment. This is a good call or not. We're going to get a real look at it here. The ball comes down. The ball actually hit the line, it looks like to me. He has possession of the ball. No, it hits the line right there. That ball went down and hit the line. That's as, as close as you can get it. Here's another look. That That's in the end zone hit right the line there. there. That's, a, yep. that's a touch back there. It hit the line twice. Good call by the officials. First down, London, from their own 20. McNair runs out of there with it. Got about three, and the ball came loose, but I think he's been downed at the 24-yard line. They blew it dead. Willie Wyatt and Robert Pressberry got enough of McNair to bring him down. The Orlando corners are really pressing the wide receivers of London. London's going to have to either get the ball up behind them deep or, or find a way to get that, because anything short, yeah, it's, it's going to be contested uh, by the corner. There's one of those corners, Malcolm Frank, who's had his hands on the football a couple of times and not been able to hold on. Second and six, London, from its own 24. That's Garrett in the slot on the right side. Alexander finally found a little running room, and he might get a first down. It's going to be very close, maybe a foot short. Witkowski and Andrews in on the tackle, and... Rick Andrews with helmet cam was directing traffic before this and then got in on the tackle. We get a look at Ricky Andrews now at his play the linebacker position. He's trying to tell everybody where to go. Draw, draw. He called the right play and he got in on the tackle. But Alexander got it out very close to a first down. It's third down at about a foot. Good call, Rick. You knew what was coming. Punchy, punchy. He, you know, part of the job that linebackers have, they're like quarterbacks on defense. They have to anticipate by the formations, by the field that they have, what's coming. He had a pretty good idea there, but the left, left, London left, left. people got off the ball, and uh, they made it, gave themselves right a chance down, for a third right and short. Down. Third down, less than a yard. third and one it's going to be third and six Dave Harbor the tight end took off early well I think he was changing the, the play on the line of scrimmage then and you know he probably would have been better served just to go with what he had 
Every once in a while, quarterbacks can outthink themselves. Changed the play, then the starting count slipped away from them all, and then the tight end went offside. Now he's third and six. The other thing on that, John Harbor had just come in for Ray Wilsey because Pops in the normal tight end had limped off on the last play, so he came in maybe a little over anxious, trying to become part of things, and there you look at Pops in out on the sideline, and they're checking over the lower leg. Third down and almost six. McNair. Nice job defensively by Ephraim Thomas. Tony Sargent, the intended receiver. Thomas made a great play from his free safety spot. Again, the ball was on the money. As his receiver's got to do a better job of coming back for the ball, but that was an outstanding Bring defensive play. Ricky Anders from Anderson from Helmet Camp gets a look right at it. Oh, that's a nice job. Ephraim Thomas just did what you're supposed to do and exactly the way you're supposed to do it. Ellsbury in the punt. Again, a 10-man front for the Thunder. In this spot where you bring some heat, and they bring it. But a nice punt to get it out of there, and Joe Howard Johnson calls a fair catch and takes it back at the 33-yard line. Good kick under some pressure of 42 yards. 9.38 to go first half here at the Citrus Bowl. Still the Thunder by six. There's a guy in the middle at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers called Sergeant Rock. Floyd Peters, defensive coordinator for the Buccaneers, over with a contingent from Tampa. He's, He's got a red shirt there. Yep. Brad, that guy can teach pass rush. I've never seen any team that he's coached that didn't rush the pass and really well. Mitchell got it out to Titley. And to the 41-yard line before Dedrick Dodge, who was holding on for dear life, can help bring him down. Well, again, this, team, this team executes this bootleg as well as any team in football, Cincinnati Bengals, and I'm sure the Tampa Bay Buccaneers will now go to it a lot. Uh, but Scott Mitchell is very good at it. It's a big part of their game. Outside double. Second down at two. Mitchell, eight out of 14 so far in the night. Gives it off on a long handoff to Vic, who got the two yards and then some, and ran over Ricky Williams. And Ricky's going to give us, uh, oh, we got a penalty marker down. Let's wait and see. Well, it's the umpire again, so it's holding. Thank you. Been doing it all game. <laughs> you got to love a polite linebacker. Thank you. Oh. And somewhere in there, a holding. Four. Ten yard penalty. Repeat second down. Ed Hockley, our referee tonight. And Ricky Williams, you heard him say thank you. They've been doing it all night. Well, that's part of the uh, being polite to the official. And <laughs> hope that he helps you the next time. Did you thank those guys on good calls? Double, I thanked them every time. <laughs> I thanked them sometimes 30, on bad calls if they went my way. 30, 30, 30, huh? Second down and 12. And now from the shotgun with just under nine minutes to go with a half. Mitchell will work with four wide receivers. We saw a receiver come back to the football and the ball thrown her a little earlier, a little early compared to London, who's throwing the ball a little later. Here's kind of a zone pass defense. Joe Howard Johnson sees it, comes back to it. The ball gets there before the defenders do. Almost everything Orlando does is underneath like that. And the ball comes out of the quarterback's hands quickly. Third down and two. Okay. Run. Okay. Run, run, run. Roger Vick, the single setback. I don't know. It's going to be close. I think he's short. I think he also fumbled the ball, which may get a, a, a less advantageous placement. Ricky Williams again in on the tackle. They're going to take a look at this one close enough to measure. I gave him a hell of a spot. Yeah, that spot was, was a good spot. We're going to look at it. He fumbles the football. You see him coming off tackle. A good block by Cunningham controls his man. Linebacker just comes up and Ricky, oh, that's that's clearly a fumble. And when things are going good, they're going good. The ball comes right to him and he gets the first down. And again, the spot may have been a pretty good one. Galen Hall likes it. Ray Wilsey does it. 48. 48. 
Galen last year on the left side, the head coach here this year, last year offensive coordinator for the Thunder, and Ray Wilsey, as we told you last year, defensive coordinator for the Monarchs. So a couple of first-year head coaches in the World League. Where's the waggle? Where's the waggle? We'll watch for the waggle, too, from the 43-yard line on first down. There it is. Time to play fake. Mitchell, got to get rid of it. Boy, did Ricky Williams let him have it after he let go of the football. Well, the waggle and the bootleg are the same plays, really, just different names. Scott Mitchell got out there, and they covered everybody. We're going to look at, at, at Ricky Williams make a play here, travel the distance. Watch, watch the fake now. Now he comes back, sees it. what football is folks that was a great shot i tell you what we are going to have a battle for the edge helmet can play of the game tonight because we got a couple of keepers already and we are not to halftime 732 to go in the half ricky williams is definitely all helmet cam so far i guess so second and ten mitchell steps up fires over the middle got it to midfield short of the first down by a couple of yards joe howard johnson his favorite receiver and on the grab Let's check in with Michael Barkin. Mascot central on the sidelines, Brad. On the extreme right is Thor. On the extreme left, the medicine man. And, of course, my favorite is Thunderdog. <laughs> which one of you guys Which one of you guys is the official mascot? Thor, the god of thunder. Uh, what do you say to that medicine man? Who's the official? The man of spirit and sports. Oh, my, and Thunderdog, you just don't talk. <laughs> All right. He's, he's heard the Barkin before. Back to you. <laughs> Third down. Hot, hot. Almost three to go from the gun. Mitchell. Oh, did he get leveled by Lockett? Scott's been hit a couple times this series, and it's punting time for the Thunder. That London defense does not look like the best, the tenth best defense in this league. Sure they're don't. playing with enthusiasm and they're, they're contesting every play. And, and that's good for the, that's good to see. We're not going to have a, a close football game. Andy Lockett, who led the league in sacks last year, limped off a little bit after that collision with Scott Mitchell. Nice punt. A great punt. Out at the five. Exactly what Ray Griswell was hoping for. 45 yards and knocks it out of bounds. The Monarchs buried in a hole when we come back, but they still trail by only six. When the view the Monarchs have as they huddle in their own end zone, trailing by six and working from their own five-yard line. Brad, they've had four penalties on offense. If they can just get some rhythm, they can move this football and maybe getting something positive happen for them. Alexander, the single setback, gets the call and barely made back to the line of scrimmage. Let's look back to the last play before the punt defensively by Ricky Williams. We're going to get a look at a linebacker, how to play this position. You can see here how important the eyes are. Watch, he moves towards the fake, realizes that the quarterback is keeping the ball, now has a dead eye on that quarterback. Watch him close this, this distance, and you can see the quarterback getting very nervous and getting knocked right on his uh, whatever <laughs> that was he got. Knocked. And look, he doesn't he look like a linebacker? He's yep. got that kind of look. So, man, don't go near me. Second down and almost 10, and McNair from his own end zone in trouble. Throw short to Alexander, and he made something out of it. Got it out to about the 12-yard line. Well, Dunbar pressuring McNair in the end zone. Well, if they can put another play together, they need a first down desperately here to get them some room. Third down and three. Kind of like the way Fred McNair is playing so far. He's moving well, and he seems to be accurate with the ball. 85! Fred's looking at a third and three. Got rid of it to Garrett. First down. To the 19-yard line. Let's listen to George Warhol, the offensive coordinator for the Monarchs. Near right. Near right. Z opposite. 14 lead draw. Let's go real right. Z opposite. 14 lead draw. Oh one, ready? First down run. It's it's uh it's a lead draw to the tailback now, Alexander. Quarterback's just gonna bring the ball back to it. They're calling it out on defense. Pass, pass, run, run. They 
it is Alexander. They make it Waters, excuse me, Mal Waters. Alexander was the lead blocker, and none of it worked anyway because Malcolm Frank knew what was coming, and he's had quite a game from his cornerback position so far. Uh, uh, Ripping. Let's go twins left. Liz. Go twins. Let's go actually half left. Liz. 826. Let's go half left. Liz. 826. Flat choice. Hold on. Ready? Liz is the protection. 826 is the pattern. Flat choice is what he's asking uh, Judge Garrett to run the back. Three wide receivers. Second and 16. Got it out, and Sargent hauled it in. Nice catch. He stayed with it. Tony had his hands on it, bobbled it for a moment, and then found the handle and got out of bounds. As Fred, McNair, as Fred McNair gets more comfortable, you see he's getting rid of the ball a little sooner. That ball's out of there to the receiver, accurately thrown. A little excitement for us that Tony Sargent uh, bobbled it just so we could show him on a replay. <laughs> he knew he's got that one all the way. Nice throw. Nice pattern. Nice catch. And a third down and five oh. coming up for the Monarchs. Man open. Got it to him. And again, it's Tony Sargent. And it's good enough for a first down. So they keep the drive alive. And the Monarchs trying to get something going here with 3-10 left first half. They trail by six. Let's go twins right. Twins right, 22 cut. Hold up, man. Twins right, 22 cut Let's is the run. right. 22, twins right, 22 cut. First down, right? No, 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 one. One. Andy, Andy, Andy. Andy, Andy, Andy. Andy. Twins right, twins right. Andy. Now let's see Andy. if they go first sound or if they go run, on one. Run, run, run. run, run. Blue, get run, run. Run, run. Tough run. Out to the 37 yard line, line for Jeff Alexander. Good run by Jeff Alexander. He was hit right in the line of scrimmage and kept his legs going. All right. If we get a look at this, you'll see how important it is for the legs to, to uh, keep going and when a, a runner is hit. Watch him now. He gets hit immediately. The nose man, boom. He watches his legs. They're going. Oh, that's a good run. That's a big time run right there for about six yards. And it is second down and four. They got six, as John said. Oh, oh, oh. That's it. With time, too high, and almost had it intercepted. Glenn Rogers had his hands on it, and the Thunder had held on to the ones that had been in their gloves tonight. They'd have about three interceptions. We've hit the two-minute warning. Actually, 157 left in the half. Six, nothing, Orlando. The London Monarch huddle. Paul Baradelli looks like he's dancing to the music here during the timeout. Well, London now has a goal. In the two minutes uh, drill now, they've got two timeouts left. Three choice has on one, ready? Scat right is the pass protection. He's going to throw a drop back pass. And he's got five yards to pick up on third down. Me, you are. Me, you are. Todd, you got to play 25. No, Todd, he's going to go. McNair pumps and got it to the 47 yard line. First down to Bernard Moore. Pick up his 17. Got a strong arm. He sure does. He had no body in that throw at all. He'd kind of gotten his weight forward and he just kind of re. re Recharged uh, it and flicked it out there. Forward to the 46 yard line, and they go with a hurry up offense as you get another look at that successful pass play. The first down right there for the London Monarchs. Clock running 145. Blitz coming from the corner. Intercepted. Malcolm Frank's been around the ball all night. He's had his hands on it twice before, and this time Malcolm says, I'm taking this baby the other way. that time and he saw the blitz and he tried to get to the receiver he was supposed to he was just out of balance on his back foot threw the ball late got it picked off those are the things that when you're not in there playing quarterback that have a way of sneaking up on you 
third interception of the year. Number 20, now come Frank. You get a good look at him right there. Well, that's the truth. Can't have a guy in your face like that trying to throw the ball. Now London, or uh, Orlando rather, with 135 left to work. Mitchell goes underneath. Out to midfield and close to a first down. Joe Howard Johnson, maybe close enough to look. And this one. Gonna measure, yeah. Clock stops on first downs in the final couple of minutes. 127 left in the half. Orlando's got three timeouts. Uh, London gave him far too much room on that play. They've got to contest this, this drive now. They can't back way off and let Orlando work its way down there and get points. When they were working for, they hoped at least a field goal chance of their own, and they really don't want to give up more points to the Thunder before halftime. They got the first down right at the midfield strike. Hot, hot. Mitchell going deep. Bell got his hands on it but couldn't drag it in. Irvin Smith, number 21, there with Brandis Bell. Good looking play by both parties, just not quite. And a well thrown ball. That ball had a chance. He put it up in the air. You see, Bell's got him by a step, and that ball's led properly to him. A little bit of a hole there that we won't count. Irvin got the right hand in right there on the pad. That was a great look at what could have been a penalty and isn't. Second and ten. Five wide receivers right now for Scott Mitchell. Not a lot of help back there in the backfield with him, though. Joe Howard Johnson on the run inside the 40. Down to the 36. First down, Thunder. 14-yard pass play. Again, they gave him just too much room that time. It was too easy. They backed off and gave him about a 15-yard completion without really contesting it. At the 36-yard line, first down. And now the Thunder... Closing in on at least field goal territory with 62 seconds left first half. They lead 6-0. Again, a five-wide receiver group for left-handed Scott Mitchell. Goes short across the middle to Davis. And a nice open field tackle right in his tracks. Dedrick Dodge, who's been in on a lot of stuff. Tonight. That's what they need to do. They need to make a, a you know, risk, let them throw deep. Time out. Test the short pass. Galen Hall looking for more points. Takes a timeout with 46 seconds left of the half. So our lab guys wanted me to explain the advanced formula in new Rain Dance car polish. I told them, hey, forget that. Just show how easy it is to wipe off. They said no. They'd rather show how new Rain Dance lasts longer than those once a year polishes. Something about this special ingredient makes water beat up better longer. I said, nah, show the car. They said no, maybe the bottle. I said car. They said bottle. New Rain Dance. Hey, you can't argue with science. You'll find advanced formula Rain Dance at these fine stores. A lot of women find my looks intimidating. Do you? My mother makes the best brisket. There I was, there I was, there I was, in the Congo. Why is a good man so hard to find? <laughs> Just a minute, okay? <laughs> why ask why? Try Bud Dry. It's dry brew, not watered down. To drink light, yet satisfy completely. So while men aren't perfect. You think so? At least refreshment is. The World League on USA is being brought to you by Kentucky Fried Chicken. Nobody's cooking like today's KFC. By the Sports Extra Score Bowl. Fast, accurate, and dependable. The Sports Extra Score Bowl. And by reliable, efficient train air conditioning. It's hard to stop a train. With John Robinson and Michael Barkan and all those crazy fans in the green out there, I'm Brad Nessler back at the Citrus Bowl, Orlando, Florida, with a Thunder lead 6-0. It's second down and seven. We eavesdropped on the defensive huddle during the timeout, John. You cover. Well, I think How? they're going to come. A little uncertain about cover? who's got who here. Dan Crossman calling the defense from the secondary. Mitchell from the gun. Here comes that blitz. Mitchell over the middle. Wide open is Johnson. Nice move inside the 20. Down to the 12-yard line. I'm out again. 22 yards. Six 
66 yards on six catches for Joe Howard Johnson, who was wide open over the middle. Well, the confusion that we saw there, they weren't sure who had him, and obviously nobody has him. He gets in the middle and say, man, I got a shot. In the end zone, you look, it's surprising this isn't a touchdown. There's nobody anywhere near. The back judge is the closest guy to him. Stands in the spot a little too long, and they get to drag him down. Well, now Danny the, Lockett gets back there and makes a play. Unless the Thunder make a mistake here, they are going to have at least uh, another opportunity for three more points. On the empty okay. by leaving the Coming up, the Budweiser halftime half report. Nine. Okay. Michael Barkin yeah. will profile on uh, Jalen Hall. We'll have highlights of the first half. We'll update you on the other game going on tonight at last report. The Sacramento Surge was shutting out the Frankfurt Galaxy as they search for a playoff berth in the World League second season. Right now, the Orlando Thunder already in the playoffs at 6-1 and one, have moved it to the 12-yard line of the Monarchs. First and 10, and there's your timeouts remaining wide receiver offense again for Scott Mitchell. Mitchell throws out Joe Howard Johnson. Another catch, another mo nice move, and down to the three-yard line. They have one timeout left. Left. They're going to try to get the ball snapped, not use that timeout. It's been the Joe Howard Johnson show on this drive. Mitchell might toss this one down just to stop the clock with 17 seconds left. Well, they still have one timeout that they can use, 17 seconds, which gives them some flexibility. They can try to run on first down and take the timeout, then throw. I think they'll probably do is come back with two uh, passes. It's empty, Galen. It's I think empty. Go 82 uh, again. 82, 82, 82. 82, 82. All right, Look. there's the call. Eight plus, you can do it, Scott. Eight plus. I thought Scott was looking for a running back. He still doesn't have one out there. Scott. He's all right. He got tripped over there. 82. Red 82. Red 82. Third down, a yard. They can get a first down inside the two-yard line. But right now, they're obviously thinking end zone. They've got five wide receivers out there. Mitchell over the middle. Knocked down, almost intercepted by Ricky Williams. And Ricky can probably help us read the letters on that football, but he couldn't hold we should, on. We should see the helmet cam on that one coming right at him. Ricky, they played zone, and there just wasn't any play in front. Watch now. Ricky Williams just keeps his eye on the quarterback. He's sitting in a perfect spot. Receiver's coming to him. Here comes the ball, Ricky. Oh, oh Ricky. <laughs> oh, Ricky. I think you heard Ricky rather emphatically say it hit me right in the hand. <laughs> Look at that ball bouncing down there. Man, oh, man. Here's a field goal unit in. And again, the snaps to the holder have been a sore spot. This one's clean, and the kick is, too. Bennett knocks it through. 21-yard field goal with nine seconds left in the half. They've got to give London at least credit for holding on and not allowing a touchdown. They're still only trailing by nine. Well, they just haven't been able to put together a sequence on offense where we would have a two-point game or, or maybe even an even game. And the blitzing has hurt them. McNear uh, that time coughed up an interception where they could have gotten points because the blitz hurried his throw and he just threw it behind the receiver and then Orlando was able to work it back. The five wide receiver uh, concept for Orlando really uh, unsettled London's defense on that drive. Galen Hall, we'll hear from him at halftime, just nine seconds away. Former Florida coach, former AP coach of the year. A great couple of seasons back in the mid-80s with the Gators when they went 17-1-1. And obviously very well known in this part of the country. Let's take one more look at Ricky Williams wearing helmet cam and watching what would have been an end zone interception go by the boards. Well, you can see how just what a marvelous shot this is. Ricky's in the right place. The receiver's coming to him. And he said, my God, I am the receiver. <laughs> Here's an onside kick. And London covered it well. So the Thunder has given one opportunity to the Monarchs here. Nice job by Ron Shipley to tackle to cover that onside kick. And at the 49-yard line, London's got a shot. Now, if they can get a completed pass and get the clock stopped, why Orlando did this, I will, will not, you know, I'm not sure what the thought process was there. 
Maybe just to give London a chance to get back in the game. Is it possible that Bennett wanted to line drive that thing and just flat missed it? It didn't look like he had guys going down to try to cover it. Now McNair with a chance. Final seconds and going deep. He's got a gun and he laid it out there and it's intercepted. Glenn Rogers tracked that one down. And that ends the first half. it on the line receiver just can't get there this guy's got a gun though he can throw that football that was a so. line shot that's the fourth interception of the year for Rodgers let's talk to the trailing coach Ray Wilsey with Michael Barkan coach 10th ranked defense and uh, you're playing pretty good D against the top rated offense but you're not getting points well that's been one of our problems this year we haven't scored enough and we play hot and cold what are you going to do adjustments for the second half? Well, we'll have to and talk about it a little bit and see what uh, mistakes we made. We'll try to get them straightened out and come back and get more offense going. Thoughts on McNair and how he's playing at quarterback? I think he's doing quite well. All right. Thanks, Coach. Brad? All right. Thanks, guys. Too many penalties on that club. But Ricky Williams, who's wearing helmet cam, is keeping London in it. They trail 9-0 at the break. We'll be back. $49 a month. Offer ends May 18th. The Budweiser Halftime Report is brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beer. With that clean, crisp, cold taste, nothing beats a bud. Halftime, the Thunder leading the Monarchs 9-0 here in Orlando. Last year, the Thunder 5-5 five five, didn't make the playoffs. After a strong start, they fizzled, but right now Galen Hall's got them as North American East champions. And let's meet the head coach of the Orlando Thunder with Michael Barkin. I think a good coach is someone who uh, is able to adapt to the players and to the situations that they've been dealt. He lets the team run the team. He let the guys who, who are going to be the leaders to stand up kind of like take control and when he needs to say something he'll say something he's a winner he's a winner you know he presents things to his players he's a player's coach and he goes out he shows us what how to win and uh, we go out and execute for him he's a player's coach what does that mean a guy who's a communicator someone who's a proven winner perhaps more importantly though a man who's earned the respect of his team here in Orlando they sum it all up in two words Galen Hall if you go and try to project yourself as someone you're not, these young people today are intelligent enough to see a con. And I, I don't think you, uh, you can go out and con people. I really don't. I think you have to be yourself. I think you have to be honest with them, be truthful with them, uh, and be fair with them. Uh, when we're playing poorly, he's going to tell us. And when we're playing good as a team, he's going to tell us. And he's not, he's not the type of coach who, uh, you know, is going to blow smoke at you. I mean, he's going to shoot you straight forward and he's going to be honest. For Galen Hall, being a player's coach makes personnel decisions that much more difficult. Prior to the season, he benched number 12, quarterback Kerwin Bell, who had played for him at Florida in favor of number 19, Scott Mitchell, an enhancement player from the Miami Dolphins. When I told Kerwin, it was very difficult on him and, and myself. Uh, but again, uh, Kerwin's a competitor. He wants to play. I know that. Uh, it's one of the decisions I felt that uh, I had the two best quarterbacks in the league. But Coach Hall, he, he made the decision. Right now we're six and one. He's coaching. He's doing a great good job coaching this team. And um, you know I, I'm I'm in a situation right now that I don't want to be in. But but I've learned now that to help this team, I got to be ready to play. If something happens to Scott or or they need me, I got to be ready as a backup to go out and help this team win. Sometime, uh, as an individual, you got to say, hey, this isn't best for the football team. Uh, this isn't best for the business. I've got to make this decision, and it's a very tough decision, but you have to make it. He's not a strict guy with him. He said, I'm going to treat you like men as long as you react to me like men. If you don't, then I'm going to have to change some rules. And right now, he hasn't had to change any rules. He'll let you be yourself, and he'll let you do your thing to a point, and then, and then it goes back to, you know, Hey, you're, you're, you're messing up or you guys aren't, aren't practicing like you should be or you're not ready to play and, and he'll point that out to you and he's, he, he's just honest with you. Last year, it was a new year, uh, a new league. I mean, got people that hadn't played in a couple years in this league. Uh, 
we had no closeness. We had no feeling, hey, we're the Orlando Thunder. Let's, let's be a great organization. I think this year there's more unity. Uh, people are realizing, I know our players are realizing, they're enjoying it here. They enjoy Orlando. They're, they're, they're proud to be a part of this football team. You set your goals high, really high. You know, I mean, just set them up there where you can hardly reach them. And if that's your goal and you almost get it, you're pretty darn good. Uh, and our goal is to go to the World Bowl. Will our new lightning blade actually make your job as easy as this? Well... Lightning stays sharp longer, cuts easier than the blade you're using, or your money back. We were all tied up on the Delacour case, unable to identify the mystery block. Luckily, Louie was back. A Freedom Zoom again. With Minolta's unique eye start, Freedom starts zooming before it even meets your eye. So, when you can't get to the picture, Freedom zooms the picture to you. And fast. Shoot! Look at this. It's our secretary. Looks like she takes more than dictation. Americans choose the freedom to zoom. Only from the mind of Minolta. In trying to make an artistic statement, one should be careful not to let one's personal aroma do the talking. In order not to offend the critics, I recommend Right Guard Sports Stick. It provides maximum protection and the freshest scents, a sublime palette of odoriferous emanation. After all, a true artiste should be remembered for his inspiration, not his perspiration. Right guard sports stick. Anything less would be uncivilized. They're tiny portraits of a people with personalities as varied as our own. They sing of our heroes go with our history. There are as many reasons to love stamps as there are people who love them. These are stamps worth saving. Ask for the baseball stamp at your post office now. In Orlando at halftime at the Citrus Bowl, the Orlando Thunder out in front of the London Monarchs, 9-0. As they got a touchdown on their opening drive. Welcome back, everybody. Brad Nestler and John Robinson. A, an impressive opening drive for the Orlando Thunder, but you got to give the London Monarchs defense credit, John. They're keeping them in the ball game. Nine nothing, not too bad. Orlando came out and looked like they were just going to keep the ball for the rest of the night and score every time they, they had it. Had a great drive, ended it with a quarterback sneak for a touchdown. But since then, uh, Orlando's come, I mean, uh, London's come back. Here you see the end of the great drive. Quarterback sneak for a touchdown. We're going to get a look at it from a helmet can. You see Ricky uh, Williams coming in there on that shot. Now let's look at it from uh, Ricky Williams' perspective. And we'll have a listen as well. Well, Scott Mitchell paid the price, but he got the yard to cap an 80-yard march in 15 plays. Six nothing after a botched extra point attempt. Here again, linebacker doing his job. Let's watch and listen as Ricky Williams recognizes the bootleg, responds to it, and gives a real lick to Scott Mitchell. Now, if you think Ricky Williams had Scott Mitchell in his crosshairs, think of what he thought later just before half with this pass that could have been intercepted in the end zone. This is down close to the goal line, zone pass defense. Ricky Williams is doing everything perfect. He, he gets a glance, sees a receiver coming in, holding his position, eyes on the quarterback. He goes, oh my gosh, he's throwing me the ball. Oh, no. Now watch his hands come up to his head here, saying, oh, please. What a great shot. Ricky that cost Williams. Him three points. It really it was did. A nice play and, and great camera work. But the Monarchs have given up only nine points, and uh, we'll see now if the London offense can get in gear. Only 108 yards in that first half. Fred McNair has been intercepted twice. He's going to have to get in gear, and they'll see if they can get their running game going as well. We'll find out when we come back. Take a look at this.
Home service in a location nearest you. Call Elegant Entries at 1-800-482-6900. Never compromise when your family's safety is at stake. The Budweiser Halftime Report has been brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers. With that clean, crisp, cold taste, nothing beats a bud. Kenny? Nice to have you along with us on this Saturday night on USA Network in our World League coverage week eight. And already the Orlando Thunder in the playoffs. We know that as North American East champions. They've won five straight. They've got the lead here as we are set for the third quarter. The London Monarchs will get the football first. Ricky Williams out there on the kick return team for the Monarchs. Really no reason for the Monarchs to panic right now, John. Nine points is not that much. No, if they can, you know, just eliminate the offensive errors, handle the blitz, continue to get a rhythm and get a break or two. You know, sometimes when you're when you're in one of those losing streaks, the breaks don't come. But if they're patient, a couple will come for him and we'll have a close ball game. Bennett's kick goes to McManus at the two. Curtis McManus trying to follow his blockers, but a great job on the special teams playing through Kevin Gidry, playing through his blocker to make the tackle. So the Monarchs will work just outside their own 20 at the 21, and here comes Fred McNair. He was intercepted twice in the first half, one right at the end of the second quarter. There's his numbers from the first half. So deuce left, 23 cut, on one, ready? 23 cut now is a, just a, a play right at him which is the kind of Let's running go. that has been effective for them so far in this ball game. When they just line up and say, here we come. He's coming out. He's running he's inside coming out. on Orlando. They've done well. The referees don't want to start this. Right, one. right. Andy, Andy, Andy. Andy, Andy, Andy Andrews Andy, calling the defensive Andy, signals right, go, for the right, Thunder. Go, right, go. Andy, Andy, Andy. Two, two. We got to go. Go. Blue, 84. Single oh, setback is Jeff Alexander. Up the middle. Got about two and a flag now. Well done, Barr, on the tackle. And also, that was the air right away that has jumped up and bitten him again. Holding penalty. That's the fourth holding penalty. That's too many holding penalties to call in a game. Statistically, in the first half, possession time relatively even. Orlando had a little bit longer. But uh, Orlando and London Territory, four of their five possessions. You see the passing yards for Scott Mitchell, 161. Nice third down conversion. And a couple of turnovers for London, both interceptions thrown by McNair. As John said, the penalties have really been the key stat. And they're the most penalized team in the World League. Tonight, five for 40. And four of those have been holding calls. Now they've got the ball first and 20 deep in their territory. This is where disaster starts. This is an awful spot for a young quarterback. Throws short to Alexander, who got around one man and got out to the original line of scrimmage, almost. Completed the 20 yard line. Carl Dunbar in another tackle. Yep. All right, give me a call here. You want to go near, right, near left, 826. Regular, regular, regular. Near left, 826. Uh, near left near is the left. formation. Liz, Liz, 826. 826 is the pattern. New left, New left, Liz, 826, flat choice, 0-1, ready? Flat choice tells the backs what they can do. So Andy, Andy. wide receivers are running an 8 and a 6, tight ends running a 2 out in the flat. 25. They need 11 Blue, on 25. second down. Cut! Cut! Another flag down. Across the middle, almost intercepted again by Glenn Rogers. I'm telling you, McNair put some velocity on that ball, but it'll be a motion call against the Monarchs. So another penalty, and right after they get back nine of the yards they lost in the holding call, they get a five more for motion. Well, they're very unsettled by Orlando faking the blitz. You notice the Orlando linebacker stepping up in there, causing them to change some assignments uh, or you know, just basically intimidate them before the ball center. Paul Berardelli's got two penalties on this possession. The well, left guard. A little bit rattled at the moment. Penalty decline, third and 11. Okay, dude. Across 
across the 40 to the 43 is Tony Sargent. First down and a pickup of 23. He had great protection that time and he took advantage of it. He was very patient, looked, found Tony Sargent wide open in the middle. Watch the protection now. He's got everybody under control. He just stands there. He doesn't get his body into many throws and he doesn't use his feet particularly well, but he's accurate with the ball. Tony Sargent makes a nice jump, leaping catch. Nice job. Now the Montana Blue show a four receiver Blue offense Blue with Judd Garrett right there in the left of your screen on a wing. Talk about reading it right. Dan Cilio, the left inside tackle, met Jeff Alexander before he got back to the line. They blitzed, obviously, and they've timed the blitz very well. They've got a rhythm on the starting count. That's why double quarterbacks want to change double, starting go, count so that blitz. that blitz doesn't come. Double. Watch them just kind of hit it as the ball snapped. Had a, a missed blocking assignment. Right guard saying, there's too many guys coming over my area here. New left guard, James Harper, in as Berardelli went off for London. It's second and 13. Here they come again. Look out. Incomplete pass. Ephraim Thomas with a free safety blitz. Again, when those blitzes work, defensive coordinators say, hey, why not come again? And that's, uh, and that's what's happened. 42, double sound. That's Pete Kuharczyk, the defensive secondary coach, sending the play into Rick Andrews, the inside linebacker. Here you see there's just one too many coming off. The quarterback doesn't recognize it, doesn't hurry the throw, and they're coming again. I think he called another blitz. This is quarterback got to take this on the first down and get back there before this blitz. This is somewhat ah! unlike the Thunder, but it's working for him. So here they come on third and 13. Out to midfield. Nice catch by Sargent again. A little bit short of the first down, a couple yards short. They're going to just keep coming until he beats him, which he did that time. They took the starting count a little faster, and that blitz wasn't as well timed. He got enough so, chance to get the ball off. John, this is what nice the New York, New Jersey Knights did defensively last week against the Monarchs, and it worked for them. And obviously, the Thunder said if it worked for the Knights, maybe it'll work for us. And that's what they have to solve if they're going to have a chance to win this game. That's got to be the number one question that uh, is dealt with on the sideline. That's where to punt. Will Howard Johnson back inside his 15-yard line. Johnson will take this one from the 16. And given ground to try to get some. And it didn't work for him. He lost yardage after a 33-yard kick. Minus three for Joe Howard Johnson trying to make something happen on the return. 11-17 to go third quarter. It is still the Thunder 9. The Monarchs nothing. Looking good, get into Bud Light. A clean, fresh taste won't fill you up. Never let you down. You can taste it, you can feel it, you know you got it right. Everything else is just a light. Keep your Bud Light shining. Everything else is just a light. What? You gotta be kidding me. Have you ever wanted to call the play? Well, now's your chance because you're the coach. Play the game. Make the big call. Be the game-winning coach. Call now. You can show the coaches how to do it. Use your best strategy to win the big game. You call the play. Now that's how to call a play. If you know football, call 1-900-773-2255. 269 per minute, adults only. This is not what you want in a shave. Now you've got the edge with six rich lubricants for less irritation. You've got the edge. Introducing Tire Foam from Armor All. One spray, and even old tires look great. Kind of makes you wish we make car foam. New Tire Foam from Armor All. What a night in Central Florida. Beautiful. It was 80 degrees at kickoffs, cooled off now. 
perfect night for football for the Orlando Thunder and the London Monarchs and a good crowd on hand to watch the Thunder who have led from the get-go. 9-0. She's really a Monarchs fan or just likes the colors of the uniforms. First down, Orlando from its 13-yard line. Daryl Clack, little quick opening draw, and nice second effort. Got him out to about the 18-yard line. Ricky Williams got a piece of the hit, and Clack bounced off that, picked up about four extra yards. Orlando has started every series just about with the run. They're trying to stay as balanced as they can between the run and the pass. Galen Hall, uh, I'm sure, saying, hey, we need to get some more points in this ball game. They started so fast, and it's not been at that pace okay. since then. Second down at five. Clack, nothing doing this time. Nice job defensively by Scott Miller, the nose tackle. Coming up tomorrow. Leslie Nielsen flies the wacky skies of airplane, the USA movie, tomorrow at 2 1 Central. Don't call me Shirley. <laughs> I love that movie. <laughs> 10 37 left. We got a penalty marker down. We might have a clip. And Ray Wilsey says, let's take it, boys. Let's take it as close to the Orlando goal line as we can. Again, you get the feeling that something has gone out of Orlando. That first touchdown might have been too easy for him because they have not produced much since then. I'm sure Galen's given that some yeah, thought. Here's a call. Personal foul. Back back black on the offense, number 86. Half the distance to the goal. Repeat second down. Crack back block on wide receiver Willie Davis. That means a, a, a receiver set outside the offensive tackle cannot come back in and block below the waist. Clipping is normally defined as blocking be from behind. But in this instance, the crackback means you cannot block below the waist. Next time we get him, trying to save some knees out there. Second down and 14 for yeah, Scott Mitchell. Them, right? China 53! China 53! Why? Why? Hut, hut! From his own end zone. Maybe. And that ball almost picked off by Smith. Boy, they were coming after Mitchell. Scott did a good job just to get rid of the ball. It could have been a uh, safety. He was standing on his own goal line. He scrambled. He's big enough to scramble out of there, and he can manage just to keep his eyes down the field. I like that about him. Here you see there's pressure coming right now. There's a twist stunt that they don't pick up. He's got that ball hanging out there near his goal line. A little scary. This is when you want to throw it away. He almost gives up an interception. Third down at 14. With four wide receivers. Mitchell again from his own goal line. Lays it out long. Incomplete. Nice coverage. Stride for stride. Irvin Smith out there with Grantis Bell. And the London Monarchs do their job on defense. Now they're going to force a punt from the end zone by Criswell. You can feel the confidence in the London defense. They feel they can cover these people. They're doing a good job, and they're starting to put pressure on Mitchell. Mitchell is, is throwing the ball, leaning back, knows that he's going to get hit after. London's uh, done an outstanding job of stopping. Griswell, not a good punch. But he got a good roll. Going to go out near midfield. This is going to be the best starting position for the London Monarchs all night long. They will be in Thunder territory. Nine minutes, 52 seconds left third quarter. Still 9-0 Orlando. But the Monarchs have got a good spot to work from when we come back. Well, you're stuck here. Where is here? This is Lake Edna. Lake Edna? Hammer. Isn't that sure looks like it? That's that new KFC Honey Barbecue Chicken. KFC Honey Barbecue Fried Chicken. Something new in Lake Edna or your neck of the woods. D.C. Richard & Son is your JVC camcorder headquarters. Macro autofocus, power zoom, shoots in low light, easy to use. 
and JVC cassettes play in your VHS VCR. Right now, get this JVC camcorder for an incredible $499. 90 days, no interest on the PC Richard credit card. Apply today. For JVC camcorders, come to PC Richard & Son, the video giant. Tomorrow morning, start the day right with WOR Radio, 7, 10 a.m. WOR Radio with John Gambling. Good morning, everybody. This is John Gambling, and it's Plus time a new to go sports, weather, and traffic team WOR. that's second to none. WOR Radio with Joan Hamburg. Consumer information, best buys, and bargains. At WOR Radio, we know all about mornings. We've been on the job longer than anybody else. WOR Radio, 7, 10 a.m., your information source. There's been a fire at Stoney's dock. Stoney was murdered. It took an unforgivable crime to reunite them. Chrome Soldiers on USA, tomorrow night at 7. Ricky Williams on the sideline trying to walk off what looks like maybe a, either a hamstring or a lower back problem. He went out earlier, but boy, is he giving us some thrills tonight with helmet cam attached to that linebacker. And now the Monarchs in Orlando territory to start this drive at the 49. Trailing 9-0. Alexander trying to sweep the left side. Got about five. Let's check in with Michael Barkan. Mike. With a man who's missed his first start as a world leaguer, quarterback Stan Galbaugh, and what have they told you for, as the reason for the benching? Well, they pretty much said, you know, we're going to go with Fred because the only thing left for me to do really is get injured. You know? So uh, I think they're just kind of protecting me, giving me a little break for, uh, you know, for the, this fall. I'm sure Seattle appreciates that. Well, I think Seattle would, would like to see me play and get the experience, but I don't think they'd want me to get hurt either. So, you know, it, it's tough to do both. Real briefly, put your finger on what's happened to this team last year. You went from World League champs, you were MVP, to 1-5-1 one, and one at this point. Well, I think we, we lost a lot of key guys, um, you know, coaches and players, and uh, we just never really found our, our rhythm this year, you know. Uh, we're, we're still making mistakes that, that uh, we were making back in camp, and, and uh, you know, uh, we really can't uh, put our finger on one thing. If it was one thing, it'd be easy to fix. You're still second in the league in passing yardage. Is the World League a memory for you next year, or you might be back? Uh, well, you know, you, you never say never, but uh, I, I don't foresee myself coming back next year. All right, well, good luck to you. Thanks, Dan. Brad? Stan Gelbaugh, World League's most valuable player last season. Tonight, no action, and next up, the NFL with Seattle. There's a look at Judd Garrett making a, a, a pretty good block on the linebacker, Ricky Andrews. But again, Andrews came off that block, made the tackle. But Alexander's doing a pretty good job of running the football. On second down now, they've got to be worried about that blitz coming. If they have a solution to that, they can take this football down and score. That last replay, just one of the many great helmet cam shots that we've given you tonight. Coming up near the end of our game, we'll present tonight's edge helmet cam play of the game. And John and I may have a harder time picking that than we do the player of the game. I've never seen a better description of linebacker play than it has been presented to us tonight by a helmet cam. You really get a sense of what it's really like to play that position. Second and five at the 44 for London. Trailing by nine. Here comes the blitz. McNair got it out there too far in front of Garrett. That time the blitz picked up fairly well by the Monarchs, but still an incomplete pass. It's third down. McNair never got his body around to make an accurate throw. The one thing that, that blitzes do, they don't have to get to the quarterback, but if they force him out of a rhythm, get him where he can't deliver the ball, the ball effectively, it has the uh, positive effect they're looking for. They're liable to come again now. They've got to find a solution to this problem. George Warhop letting off a little steam there. It's third and five. There's what the Monarchs have done with their third down conversion. They really need one, and maybe they'll get a free one. Nope, movement on both sides. I think Larry Jones, the right guard, is going to end up with the flag, even after it appeared that the Thunder would be the team offside. Unless there was some contact made in that neutral zone, then it would go against Orlando. And I think this one's going against the Monarchs, another costly penalty at an awful time. Well, this is... Uh this is just uh, frustrating and ridiculous for this to keep happening to London at this point in the season. They've got to have a, they've got to have a solution to it. This is the sixth penalty the that they've the had. Offense, right guard. 
five-yard penalty. It remains third down. So now instead of third and five, it's back up to the original line of scrimmage, the 49. Now bringing in the same blitz. You don't need to worry about making a firm arm. Okay. There, he's talking to the quarterback, trying to make sure he keeps the quarterback focused on what he has to. It's really tough on him. On him. He sees all those guys coming. Got too many problems. Blue 85. Here they come. McNair. Incomplete. And a punting situation. Three and out for the London Monarchs, who waste excellent field position. Here, here we see a linebacker blitzing. He's coming off the corner. Rick Andrews now is coming. I think 22 is going to pick him up. That's Trying Judge to sneak inside now. Comes right through. Boom. There's a collision now. He's still alive. Continuing to put pressure. Punting situation for the Monarchs. Just got the kick away and hit it a mile in the air. Johnson, fair catch, taken at the 14-yard line. So it's a battle of field position so far here in this third quarter that has 8 minutes, 40, sex uh, 40 seconds remaining. And it's still the Thunder by 9. Caliber. Also the 50 or the ultimate, the 200. Shark. What you need. Shark. What you need in business today is. Shark. Shark thinking about business. It gives you the world's first desktop. Color facts. Color facts. Shark. Shark. And high resolution VGA notebook computers that fit in your briefcase. Shark. Shark thinking. It created the high performance master series copier and our most powerful wizard electronic organizer. Shark thinking. To be innovative in business, you need. Shark thinking about business. Strike. An all-new season on USA, tomorrow night at 10. Brad Nessler, John Robinson, and Michael Barkan at the Citrus Bowl in Orlando, Florida, where the Thunder leads 9-0. Ricky Williams back in there. Waggle, waggle, waggle. All right. Four, four. Run, run, run. The Thunder from its own 14-yard line. They give it off to Vic. Roger Vick, former number one draft choice of the New York Jets, gets it out near the 20-yard line. Defense led that time by Curtis Moore. Let's listen to the collision with Ricky Williams and Roger Vick. Wow. That was a couple of collisions there. The guard got a great initial hit on uh, Williams and then the ball carried. Second and four. Vick got into the secondary this time. First down out to the 29-yard line. Dan Crossman and Curtis Moore bring it down, but not before the 240-pounder out of Texas A&M yeah, picks up the deep. first down. Okay. Ace! Ace! Give it to me. Okay, 34. 34, Scott. 34. 34! Get in there. Yeah, he's hurt. 34. 34. It's calling 34, which is a code that everybody looks in their wrist 34. and finds the real play. 34 is a... We've got three wide receivers in the game. And Darryl Clack is a single setback. On first and ten. It's out to Clack in the flat. Followed his blockers. And got tagged at the 36-yard line. Gets across the 35 Monarch's yard Monarch's defense certainly not giving up. Well, they're playing aggressive football and pursuing the ball very well. 42. 42. Ken Karcher on the left. Charlie Bailey on the right up in the booth for Orlando. <laughs> Ricky Williams gets a lot of collisions, and he makes, don't you get the feeling, Brad, he makes a lot of tackles right with that face mask. And it wasn't a penalty marker down. We might have a holding call in Orlando, and Ricky Williams again. And a couple of his last plays have faded to black at the end. That's because he's on the bottom of the pile. You got me a couple times. Keep working, keep working. Here we go, what are you, huh? Pat, keep working. Pat. That's Blaine kind of Rose. the almost camaraderie that goes on between blocker and linebacker. And Ricky said, Ricky said to Blaine Rose, you got me a couple times. On the offense, number 64, 10-yard penalty, repeat second down. It was Rick Cunningham, though, that was caught with a holding penalty, the left tackle. So that negates that run. The umpire is uh, 
is dominating this football game. He has had five calls in this football game. He got me on That's over 50 yards of penalty, so that really ball. negates huh? the offense. Cut back. No, no, no. No, it's the new far one over there. Up in the nose. Ricky, you got to tell that defensive yeah. coordinator to let you back in the ball game. You're, yeah. you're, our, you're our mighty source of entertainment. Back side. <laughs> yeah. on Second down and seven. The ball back at the 32. Draw play inside a clack. Ricky Shaw got a hold of him first and got help from his friends, including Moore and Crossman. And it will be a third down and about three upcoming for the Thunder. Again, the Monarch defense is doing this share. They responded to the draw play and they got somebody in there. You're going to stay in 20. Uh, Ricky Shaw's come out of there with an ankle injury. Shaw's the guy that got Flack wrapped up and then a wave of Monarch defenders came to help him. John Shannon's going to come in and that'll change the look of the Monarch defense a little bit on this upcoming third down play. I may have said third and three. It looks closer to third and two now after they've spotted it. And there's the yard rushing. Well, it's Orlando has a balanced offense. It hasn't been as productive tonight as you would think, but they still are going to run the football enough to give them the chance to keep the other guy balanced. Third down and two, the way they've been running the football, you would expect them to come right out. There you go, Yelp. It's Kerwin Bell on the sideline. He started all last year for the Orlando Thunder, former Florida Gators star. And uh, not too happy with the fact that he's sitting, but he's sitting behind a good quarterback in Scott Mitchell. This is maybe one of the better one-two punches at quarterback in the World League. Third down along two, and they will not get the two. They won't even get one. Nice job by the London defense again. John Shannon, 71. Steve Kafusi, 75. There for Ray Wilsey's defense, and here comes another Orlando punt. Well, that's that's an excellent defensive job. They've kept Orlando backed up in their own territory. They got two first downs, but that's the extent of Orlando's offense in this half is getting the ball from their own 20 down to about their own 38. Both putters have performed well tonight. Here's Criswell. The punt. Low snap. Got the kick away. This is not a good one. End over end. Let's see if it's handled. It will be from the 21. Good move by Bernard Ford. He got 10 yards on the return. Kind of gutsy to pick that thing up on the hop. But he got it out to the 31-yard line. Well, let's see if they've solved this blitz problem or not. I hate to keep uh, belaboring it, but it's the coaching uh, responsibility of the London football team, their offensive coaching staff. They need to solve this problem. 5.22 to go third quarter. Our score remains the same. I always dream in color. Ricky Shaw getting retaped and will probably re-enter the next time the Thunder has the ball. Right now his Monarchs offense out there at the 31-yard line. Good crowd on hand, John. They've talked about the fact this city is Got about 16,000 average in a very, very big stadium here tonight. We've got a great crowd. Yeah, and I, and, an enthusiastic crowd and, and enjoying a good football game. You mean? Some hard hitting what? defense by both sides tonight. McNair again under pressure. And he will run and get what he can, and it isn't much. Got about three, maybe four, before Malcolm Frank almost took his hand out. a keeper driven out by Malcolm Frank. Next week. We've got more World League action for you. Barcelona will take on the New York, New Jersey Knights in the Meadowlands, or some of you will see Ohio and Sacramento have at it. The surge trying to stay in the top spot in the North American West. There's a do that uh, somebody once called helicopter head on that one of Taylor's haircut. Second down and six, Alexander. Got three. Still going to bring up third down situation. Sacramento leading, by the way, in their ball game, 37 to 7 over Frankfurt tonight. So another big offensive display by Dave Archer and the Sacramento Surge offense. Archer maybe on his way to Player of the Year honors in the World League with the numbers he's put up. Third down and three at the 38. Blue 25. Blue 25. Great run.
rush this time. And the Monarchs finally convert a third down. Tony Sargent with the grab and out of bounds at the 43-yard line. I think there's a penalty flag. It must be a face mask over there on the sideline, so that'll give him at least five more. Ephraim Thomas, the guy that was over there taking out Sargent, and let's see if he's the guy that got his hands in the cage or what the call is. be able to check our reverse angle and be able to see this I think here's the quick out throw the kind of throw they need to do to do more of first down ball thrown accurately hand goes right in there to the face mask they call it incidental a five yard penalty which is going to move the ball outside the 48 yard line Brad you think a blitz isn't coming here pretty soon I tell you what every time <laughs> Fred McNair gets back there. He thinks he's got 11 gallons of lime sherbet coming after him. Let's see if they and come again. Here it is, right here. Here they come. Didn't quite stay in. The knees almost. went down. Tony Sargent. Great attempt by Tony Sargent. That was almost. They had to give him. They had to give him that one just for the effort. Huh? He sure got it out there, but his knees were on the line as he makes the catch. We're going to get a look at a really a great attempt and almost. Uh, Almost made it. There's Tony staying in. Oh, just that knee slipped over. That was, that was a great job, Tony. You know, London looks surprised when his blitz comes. You know, say, oh my gosh, they're blitzing. I don't know why it would be a surprise to him. And here it comes again. Second and ten. They haven't used Judge Garrett, Judge Garrett much tonight as a receiver. Uh, now a delay a game will be tacked on to the problems the Monarchs already have. Five yards penalty, remains second down. Here again, they become indecisive about the pressure that's coming. These things have to be solved between series, and they got to come out and say, okay, second down, this club is coming, this is what we're going to do, so Rip, you're not eight, trying seven, to eight, think two. about it under pressure. Two, now two, they've got them back up. Right? Second down. Andy, Andy, Andy. 15. Andy. Up, Mike, Blue 85. Blue 85. Penalties have really killed the Monarchs tonight as they have all season. This time maybe they'll get one against Orlando. He moved. He moved. I think the Monarchs held their ground that time. Well, let's see if Ed Hockley agrees with us, our referee. There's a penalty on the defense. Boy, that's How about that? Finally. Encroachment by the defense, unabated towards the quarterback. Five-yard penalty, repeat second down. Andy what is unabated Hamlet. towards the quarterback, man? Andy Lerner Hamlet. That means right. Fred McNair, look out again. Five. Hold on, man. That's a new big word the referees got. <laughs> Not Andy Lerner yeah. Hamlet. Rick Andrews, former 10th round draft choice of the San Diego Chargers, calling the signals for the Orlando Thunder defense, second and 10. McNair hangs in, throws to Sargent again. First down. In front of Ephraim Thomas, a 15 yard pickup. When this quarterback gets an, a normal opportunity, that means when he isn't running uh, for his life from a blitz, he puts the ball on the money. Here you see Tony Sargent down, breaks out. Gets the defensive back to cross his legs, leaps up in the air. Tony Sargent was a player with us at the Los Angeles Rams for a time. He's had a good Aggressive night. player, does a good job. He's filling in uh, for, their, for their starter. He's got six catches for 72 yards tonight. McNair got away from one, got a block, and now backpedaling and going deep. He did a nice job to get away and be able to throw that ball away. Bernard Ford, the closest receiver, and no flag on Todd Crubb came on a blitz. And Fred saying, boy, you know, it's not like this in practice. Blue flag, and time to be ready. No, we still can't go to six. Blue flag. Twins left, blue flag. You can see the frustration in the quarterback's eyes. Twins left. He's looking for some help. The offensive coaching staff has got to help him. They'll, they'll be coming again. Second and ten. Hey, draw, draw! Blue 25! Blue 25! McNair from the backside comes the blitz, and it's Ephraim Thomas from 
the safety spot. That hurts. And you can see the pain on just about everybody's face on the Monarch side. Two man. Two man. Two man. Well, the Monarch's got to be relieved. This one isn't a blitz. This is a, a, a man coverage up front with his own behind him. Third and 14. This is normally where McNair has been looking for Tony Sargent, who's found a way to get open tonight. He's not going to be able to get rid of it. Carl Dunbar. Great job of punting. That, that ball was kicked about as high and has got as much hang time as I've seen for him. A minute and 38 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Tuesday, Robert Downey Jr. lives on the edge of self-destruction in less than zero. The USA movie, Tuesday night at 9, 8 central time. Right now, the Monarchs still have a zero on the scoreboard. They trail 9-0 to the Orlando Thunder, and on first down, it's clapped. Up to the 20-yard line. Now the 90 seconds left third quarter. Curtis Moore on the tackle. Number five. This is one of the plays they put in early in training camp on that sweatband. <laughs> that one they all know. They're not as much looking at the, nope. at the wrist for that one. You get up there in those 20s, 30s, and 40s, they got to look down. is going to be content to, to continue to control the football, not give the ball up deep in his territory, play the conservative role, and uh, get out of here with a 9 and nothing win. Yeah, red 14. If he can. Red 14. You got red 14. 14! Darrell Clack has got the tough 58 yards tonight on 12 carries. That's our four. Four. He might get another call here on third down and almost two. He didn't get the two. He didn't get back to the line of scrimmage. This London Monarch defense just won't quit. Scott Miller well, on the side. that third down and two that is uh, that is frustrating Orlando right now. They've been three and out twice now. Both times third and two runs were stopped for no gain. What was they haven't shown again? And again, Bernard Ford should get pretty decent field position out of this punt. Griswold's last couple of punts have been low end over end jobs. And the third quarter's expired, so Ray's going to have to kick it from the other end. We played three in Orlando, still the Thunder 9 0. The Monarchs Thunder. Right it began as a grand vision expanding America's favorite sport into new cities in new countries creating a new type of spring entertainment spectacle daring a new breed of player to greatness showcasing an intensity of play fueled by passion for the game Offering a sports experience with color, sound, and non-stop action. For new fans, proudly displaying their team colors and cheering their favorite stars. The grand vision is now reality. 
as players in five countries take the field every week in a 10-team dash for the World Bowl Trophy. America's favorite sport has boldly moved forward, reaching out to more fans in more places than ever before. The World League, expanding the future of pro football. so far. Get down, baby! Griswell to punt. Set. And again, a line drive punt, but he's going to get a great roll out of this one. Wow, that'll go in the books as a pretty good punt. A kick of 46 yards, and it was awful. On takeoff, anyway, it was. London doesn't seem to be able to catch a break. We're going to look at the third quarter stats. Time of possession, basically even. Total yardage still going to the Thunder by a pretty good margin. And those turnovers, both in the first half, on interceptions thrown by Fred McNair. What we ought to do, Brad, is right, right over this. Can't pick, can't pick up the blitz. I mean, <laughs> that's the stat that's, the, that's the, you know, the most reflective of what's happening in this game. The Monarchs from the 33-yard line. Red six. Bobby, Bobby. play and McNair's got 10 or 11 in a first down all right that's a change of pace now that's what they need something to do to get this this game to get back to being fun for this guy you can see the change in his expression on his face when he was running around there trying to dodge those 18 guys that were blitzing him. <laughs> now he runs the option and they they take the pitch man away and he gets up the field uses his athletic ability and uh, he had some fun on that play first down the Monarchs from their own 45. McNair, incomplete intended for Sargent. Crum was there defensively. That's a tough pass to throw when you're backpedaling. Yeah, he never got it. He never got his body in a place where he could really deliver the ball accurately. Now this might be one of the key downs of this football game because here the blitz is coming again. Turn it up. Everybody knows it. Can't say I blame it. The motherfuckers been on top of it. Second down at ten. One of the things that has to happen here is the offensive coaches have to give him some help. So he has a chance to do something. Here it comes again. Get a throw, baby. There you go. Got it. Ford out of bounds, first down, a pick up of 12. Threw that one right where it had to be. Malcolm Frank was covering. Now that was a good decision where they, they won that battle. The blitz came, they got the ball, they had a plan, they got the ball off fast, and beat the cornerback. Now they've got the ball in positive field position. 23 cut on one, ready? Still a long time left to go in this game, and still only nine points separating the leader and the Monarchs who trail. Blue 85! They got a first down to the 42-yard line. Back to the ground game. Alexander got a tough four yards inside. Dunbar on the bottom of that pile along with Andrews. And they come straight at him. They're making that four and five. Here comes second down again now. Again, the call is crucial here to make sure that they have an answer in case the blitz is coming. And they don't want any more penalties either. Second and six. Second and six. To the 34-yard line goes McNair. Dean Witkowski made the tackle. And it's going to bring up third down and probably the most important two yards of the night for the London Monarchs offense. Brad, another good call. Again, the the tight end in, huh? Now, now we got the defensive the coach uh, thinking a little bit here. We're watching him. He's not quite sure. I don't know. They measured it. They called timeout. That's over Pete Kaharchik again. McNair is down after that run. And Sam Gilbaugh, somewhere on the sideline, is going to have to put a helmet on. He's got the football in hand anyway. Wasn't expected to play tonight. And really, from the feeling we got, he's not expected to play the rest of the year for London. I'm sure, I'm sure uh, 
Santa saying, uh, how, how are we picking that blitz up yeah, again? That's huh? right. Go over there with me one more time. The quick out was effective. The option was effective. And they put themselves in a third down and three. And they certainly can afford to take a chance at two, two shots here. I'm sure that's what they have to be thinking. Say, hey, let's go twice for this thing. Uh, and, and not try to kick it or not try to worry about fourth down. Let's go at them and get the... Uh, First down, if we can. Two yards on two down, right. There you go, you okay. just heard it. Yeah. Now, throwing the ball. Okay. And he called I would that go one arrow. even before the offensive arrow. coordinator okay. did. Right. Running the ball, I would run cut. Okay. Okay. Don't let okay. You, you got two downs to pick up right. the first down. Right. Two, right. two to pick it up. Two downs to pick it up. Okay, you want to go 212 first? Now I want to go arrow. Okay, let's go. Let's go twins left, new arrow. Okay. New quarterback. Stan Gelbaugh, last year the MVP in the World League. Well, it's a, it's a really kind of a gut check for Stan. Uh, you know, he had, he had felt like his season was over and he was getting ready. Now he's got to come in. And, and this team needs desperately to, to make something happen here. I think they're going to run straight at him. And the blitz is coming. Alexander in the backfield, on third and two. Gelbaugh must have checked off and throws over the head of Tony Sargent. And he was open. Tony Sargent was open. Again, the blitz came. The, the fullback, did. Uh, Alexander, did a great job of picking up. I think it was Andrews who was right there. Gave uh, Gelbaugh some time, but he just kind of threw the ball away. Monarchs one out of four of their fourth down conversions this year. Here comes another one. Got it, Stan. Got it. McNair trying to walk it off on the sideline or run it off, and Stan Gelboff faces the fourth and two. This is coming again. Gelboff gets rid of it, and Garrett can't hold on. Maybe a little high, but catchable. Ephraim Thomas there defensively. And well, that was just a tough break. They had the right thing on. Gelbaugh, see, he's got an unblocked guy coming right at him. What's coming up? Let's go to Michael Barkin. Back on the opposite sideline with Fred McNair, and you went down. How you how you feeling? Well, I feel great. I just had a little ankle twist a little bit. Just fine now. Next series, you're back yeah, in. Next series, I'm going back. You, you've been roughed up just a little bit. How you, how, how do you assess your first start? I feel good about it and everything. Uh, I feel great. Uh, I think I'm doing pretty good myself. Um, good breakdown. Some of the calls I'm not making right. So hey, I feel great about it. But you know, we're gonna overcome that. We're gonna come back. Now you just need some points on the board, Brad. All right. I think it's good that Fred's one piece. I think Fred's doing good, too. <laughs> Pick up a five over the middle. 55, 47, 47. And a second and five 47. coming up without a huddle. Hey, hey, now here. Empty, 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 empty. Three man, empty. Five yeah. wide receivers for Scott Mitchell. Complete first down to the 47-yard line of Stacy Simmons. Orlando went to this five wide receivers uh, just before halftime and moved the football. That's only their second first down in this half, so they have not been dazzling on offense. This is what they opened up with last week against Two, San Antonio in their win over the Riders. Two, three. Their entire opening series was without a huddle. territory at the 48 yard line again now this is the first positive field position that Orlando has I'm sure they're they're they're, they're probably uh, working on and from from a thinking standpoint do we keep trying to move this football consistently or do we try to strike to put this game uh, put this game away here with 10 minutes to go they've got an injury so they've got a little more time to think about that Thunder player down 
We've got a timeout with 10.42 left. Still the Thunder shutting out the Monarchs. Here we go. Locker cam in the London Monarchs locker room where they're still working on Ricky Shaw. They're going to retape again. This time, Ricky's maybe done for the night. The Monarchs still not done, but still trailing by nine. Second down and six to Orlando at the 48-yard line of the Monarchs with 10.25 left in the football game. Bell in motion. Here's a pitch on the end around of Willie Davis. Willie, uh, some nice speed, and he's got it to the 36-yard line. 13-yard pickup. Well, it was a it was a play that it was a play that was designed to strike for big yards, and it did. You see Willie Davis doing a good job here protecting the football once he breaks up the field. Quarterback just gives him a little flip that he can handle. Now he turns into that old kind of tailback. He's doing a good job of holding that ball. That oh, boy, Willie. <laughs> well, the First down just inside yard. the 37-yard line of the Monarchs. Five wide receiver group again for Scott Mitchell from the shotgun. Complete to the 31-yard line to Chris Ford, his second catch of the night. And again, they throw that underneath pass and pick up six, seven yards. They're starting to establish the rhythm now. London's got to knock them out of this. When this club is gets in that rhythm, they seem to be able to just to kind of uh, eat up the yards, four or five yards at a crack. Three, two, three, 23. Daryl Clack back into the backfield on second down, a long three. Opposite. Gets the call and got a first down to the 22-yard line. Darrell Black having a good night. Again, Brad, we talked about this earlier, that this team passes the football so then it can run it, not the other way around. The passing has been working now to get people spread out, and they pop uh, the runner right through inside. Black 70 yards on 15 carries now. A first down at the 22-yard line of the Monarchs. Draw play to clap. Again, a strong run. Curtis Moore made the tackle, but gives five more yards to Daryl Clack. Down the red at Huddle. No, we can't go. Flush, flush. Flush. <laughs> Empty five. Red QB draw. Call him the Huddle. Red QB draw. I love, I love, I love. Give him a 5-0 well, QB draw. We know what that is. Draw. Now, this is uh, Scott Mitchell saying, what? You want me to run the ball? <laughs> He's got five. Means five wide receivers. They're going to get everybody spread out. Scott Mitchell's going to take about one step back. He's in a shotgun, so he'll just pause and run right down the middle. Second and hey, five. Hey, roll, roll, Jerry. You got to get Glenn. Hut, can you move out? There's the step. There's the draw. Didn't get the five. Didn't get back to the line of scrimmage. Well, the nose man got penetration on Rod Lassau, the center. Mitchell on a keeper. And just was able to come off the block in there. Uh, Scott just isn't nifty enough Milford. to come off of that. Milford Dodge, Milford Hodge made the uh, stop. And it's third down at seven. You almost sense that the Monarchs have got to come up with a turnover to have a chance now to win the football game. We're down to 7.20 to play. Curtis, Curtis. Third down and seven. Dendrick, you got a corner. Mitchell. <laughs> Across the middle and dropped incomplete. Fourth down now. They're going for the field goal. A field goal still gives them, uh, it makes it 12 to nothing. Two quick touchdowns. I'm not sure how they're going to go about getting those two quick touchdowns. Well, the last but it time, does give them some, still some hope. Last time they had their kicker out there, they got a clean snap from Titley, number 89, to Criswell, the holder, number two. And, and then it's Tracy Bennett, number one, set to try to kick a 36 yard field goal. But remember, the snaps back to the holder have been kind of an adventure in the last couple of weeks. This one's clean enough, but it's blocked. Somebody got a hand on it. Milford Hodge may have been. There he is, doing the dance. He's the guy that got it. I think that ball, I think Milford Hodge could have been a midget and still blocked that one. That was kicked right at him, I, I think. But that's, uh, that, that's a positive thing now. London has to be able to say, hey, if we can get a touchdown, go for two, get a field goal, uh, that, that gives us enough to win this football game so they don't need two touchdowns. 
Uh, but they need to handle the blitz somewhere. That snap was pretty good. Criswell got it there, but Hodge got that big paw on the way, and boom, there it went. Well, that wasn't fair to me to say that he could have been a midget. He had to be at least 5'1", 5'2". So that one. He is poured into that frame. I'll tell you that much. First down, Monarchs. 7.02 to go. McNair from the shotgun. Throws to Alexander. Who's cartwheeled down by Glenn Rogers, but a pickup of six. Almost seven. You know, I think I would go with a no huddle here. And I, I know he hasn't got a lot of experience playing quarterback, but they do. They need something to get some vitality in what they're doing. They need to shake this game up somewhere. They keep doing this. This game, the clock's going to run out, and they're going to have zip on the board. 484 flat. Hold on, ready? Second down and three. And again, we see McNair in the gun. He wasn't in that set earlier and for most of the ball game. Now he takes off with it, got a first down, and got down at the 33-yard line. But the clock winding down, as John said, there's going to be less than six the next time they snap it, and they're taking their time back to the huddle. They just got it. They just got to think in terms of not even for the clock, just to give him some life, you know, just to get something going. Block, full left, arm O, 484 flat, hold on, ready? Gun, gun. As Fred said, here's where y'all block. You can see Ray, <laughs> Ray Wilson pointing at the clock. Go! Blue 85! And cut! McNair, in the flat to Garrett. Very short game. Nice job by Malcolm Frank, the corner. That's only the third catch tonight for Judd Garrett, who came in with 42. And again, Ray Wilsey primarily runs the defensive uh, uh, unit for London. Uh, I'm sure he's very frustrated about what's happening offensively. Ray's one of the really fine coaches who's been had a great reputation in coaching for many, many years. Worked for Tom Flores with the Raiders for a long time. Really a fine coach. Second down and seven. Right here, John, John, go ahead. Gun! Blue 80! Oh, Blue 80! Gun! Gun! The blitz from everybody. McNair lays it out for Ford, and it's almost intercepted. Malcolm Frank again out there. And it brings up third down and long. John, you know you talk about the job that Ray and George Warhop and his coaching staff have done. Okay. Galen Frank Hall and the entire Frank Orlando organization has done a nice job with his team as uh, North American East champions. They really turned it around. The acquisition of Dick Beam as general manager, I think, has been important to this group. And, you know, their, their work is starting to pay off. There's an excellent crowd here tonight. They've had some frustration in that area, but Dick Beam, Galen Hall are two names that have, have, have done a great job. Third down and seven. And the Monarchs absolutely have to have this one. We're under five minutes. There over the middle. First down at the 45. Right. Bernard that, Ford. There's, there's a big first down, Brad. Now they've got a chance now. They've got to hurry up, though. You can't mill around and get in the huddle. You've got to get right. up on the ball and get it going. Half left for our 787. Fermo. Half left. Gun. Fermo. 787. Flat drive. Hold on, ready? Bernard Ford has been the favorite target of McNair. That was his fifth catch for 74 yards Blue tonight. Blue 85! Blue 85! From the shotgun, high snap, he handles it. Set up and fires for Ford and almost had another one. Again, they were trying to find that little crack in, in that seam in the cover two, it's called. Two deep safety behind the corner in front of this uh, safety. It was well gotten in there, just wasn't quite good enough. Here we get a look at it. Look at the air he's trying to throw, just the crack. It's not a very big space in there. Pretty good attempt and an excellent throw. The kind of throw you have to make, Dwight Ford just didn't, uh, Bernard Ford rather, just didn't get both hands on that ball. Second and 10 at the 46 yard line. With 4.05 left, it's 9 0 Orlando. In and out of the hands of Ford, who probably should have had that one. Malcolm Frank covering. That would have been a first down at the 41-yard line. Well, it's third down, and, and they've got to take they've got to take two downs here. They can't worry about punting the yeah. football. Uh, Go, uh, that gets them nothing. 787. This is going to be a tough catch, but he could have had it. He, he, he's got to come back to the ball more aggressively. You see how he looks kind of lazy coming out of that cut? That's what caused that incompletion. If he'd have been more aggressive coming back to the football, he'd have had 
A little over 50% on their third down conversions. And boy, do they need one here. Third and 10. McNair. Got it. To the 39-yard line of Tony Sargent. Tony Sargent has made several big plays here. McNair, Freddie McNair, stepped around the pass rush and was able to get a little extra time. Here we look at Tony Sargent coming up the field. Given a kind of a turn coming back for the football better now. That's it, Tony. Nice job. All right. Look out for the blitz mid. Here it comes. <laughs> Although they there, Orlando's being a little more conservative, figuring the clock is working in their favor. They worked it back to the Thunder 40-yard line. And there, going deep. Man out there. In and out of his hands. Broken up by Crum at the goal line. And Bernard Ford again, the man he threw it to. Malcolm Frank and Todd Crum do a nice job. Yeah, that, that was good coverage. The defensive safety just got his left hand in there and deflected that ball. But that was the, the most dynamic strike these guys have taken all night. He's got a step on him. It's close. Oh, boy. That was... That's, you know, that's... <laughs> Might have hit Bernard football. right on the head, I think. That's what Freddie's saying. Oh, man, catch it. <laughs> Second oh. and ten at the 40. Little 25. And McNair in and out of the hands of Sargent. Coverage from Rogers on that corner. We still got two more downs now. Sargent had a chance for the ball. There was some pushing and shoving going on down. Tony's got a chance. The ball is in the air, and it comes right through Tony's hands. He's up in the air nicely for it. Ooh. Got to have those. Yeah, and he had both hands on it, too. It just was a ball's going a little faster than he expected. Third and ten. Two plays to pick it up. With 3.39 left, there's the current drive. Wide open is Gary. look at this revolutionary new car wax turtle wax new high-tech formula turtle wax the no rubbing no buffing bring back the shine 12 month car wax this is an old beater but in just minutes today's turtle wax safely brings back the shine get today's high-tech formula turtle wax watch out some household detergents can strip car wax so use zip wax car wash it cleans safely and lets the turtle wax shine shine through in making an artistic statement, one's personal aroma shouldn't do the talking. So I use Right Guard Sport Stick with maximum protection. A true artiste should be known for inspiration, not perspiration. Right Guard Sport Stick. Anything less would be uncivilized. You were here. He had the traveler's checks here. That is a problem. Well, was. Now there's American Express Traveler's Checks for two. The first checks either of you can use. Don't leave home without them. Come to a place where so many people are rich, gorgeous, and dead. 
Silk Stockings on USA, tomorrow at 9. All uh, right, you're looking, or will be looking at the symbol of last year's World Bowl Championship, the World Bowl rings worn by London this year, and that memory, they'll have to cherish it over the offseason. They won't make it this year. Brad? We'll have somebody else wearing those rings next time around, the World Bowl, June 6th in Montreal, and we'll have it for you on USA Network. We hope you join us on that Saturday night for the World League's second championship matchup. This team, the Orlando Thunder, thinks that they're going to be the club that is going to get there and win it. And they are about to go to 7-1. and one. Three minutes left in this ballgame. And now Scott Mitchell's going to take all the time that he can possibly use in the huddle and at the line of scrimmage to try to use up the remaining 2.53 of this ballgame. London's got to take time out right after this play. If the clock isn't stopped. Roger Vick, both hands around the football. Take time out right now. Got about five. And the clock is just, continuing to run. I don't quite get it, John. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's almost as though London has conceded the game and is just willing to get out of here with a 9-0. I, I, you know, this is where you take the this is where you take the time out because you can say if they'd have taken time out after that, they could have saved almost 40 seconds. And now? Uh, now they're going to go down at under two minutes. There's 40 seconds that are gone for the rest of the night. I love you very much. Third down at five. Four wide receivers for Scott Mitchell if he decides to throw. He won't. Draw play inside to Vic. And Vic didn't get the first down, I don't think. Got it maybe either within a couple of lengths of the football, but short at the two-minute warning. We'll maybe have to measure this one during the two-minute warning break. It's 9-0 Orlando. We'll be right back. It's the first week of spring training and a bunch of nice old ladies show up. Say cheese. <laughs> Wonderful. Nice, until we started working out. You call that exercising? Hey, Grandma, I don't see you doing it. Oh. 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 We finished? In your dreams, homeboy. Oh. Finally, cold buds for everybody. Atta boy. <laughs> This is not what you want in a shave. Now you've got the edge. This is the shave with six rich lubricants. This is the shave that reduces irritation. This is the shave. For less irritation, you've got the edge. Edge, proud sponsor of the NBA Most Valuable Player Award. For the Edge Helmet Camp, play the game brought to you by Edge Shaving Gel. For less irritation, you've got the Edge. Scott Mitchell's going to get a little irritation here from linebacker Ricky Williams. Let's take a look. That pretty much tells the story of what Ricky Williams did all night long. He gave us two or three or four great shots from Helmet Camp tonight, and that was just one of them. Brad, I nominate him for all helmet camps this year. <laughs> He's given us more entertainment and more education, really, about playing that position and how much your how important your eyes are and how violent it is and how much ground you have to cover. Uh, that's uh, that's just excellent television. Now a putting situation for the Thunder. And remember, the Monarchs have gotten fairly close the last three times Criswell's been out there to punt. Let's go, let's go, let's go, look. Red, red or blue? Well, you got to give London credit for making a comeback from last week when things looked so dark for them. They came in here and played a very emotional and physical game. Their defense is still tagging some people out there. They've got the return on. And off the side of Criswell's foot. If it doesn't take an unbelievable bounce, the only bounce was out of bounds at the 36-yard line. Only a 17-yard punt. And so the Monarchs have a chance. We welcome those of you who watched the Sacramento Surge route the Frankfurt Galaxy 51-7. Here in Orlando, the Thunder has led from the opening drive when they went 80 yards in 15 plays. They added a field goal, and that's all the scoring we have. 9-0, but a short 
punt off the foot of Ray Criswell now has given the Monarchs another opportunity on offense at the Thunder 36-yard line with 1.52 left. Fred McNair at quarterback across the middle and got his man at the 17-yard line. Bernard Ford again. He's been his main receiver all night. You know, Brad, uh, uh, Freddie's put the ball on the money when he's had time. And that was a nice catch. They got a shot at it now. Still got a lot of time left. First and ten. Good, good. Good, good, right. The blitz of the Orlando Thunder has raised havoc on this Monarch offense all night long. McNair. No. And incomplete. A one-hopper to Tony Sargent. They've got all three of their timeouts. If they can, if they can get this ball in the end zone, they've got a real shot at it. And if they, and, you know, I uh, I think they've got to throw for the end zone. If I were Orlando, I don't think I'd blitz right here. Right? On one, ready? Go, on, go. On. Brad Nessler, John Robinson, and Michael Barkan at the Citrus Bowl in Orlando, where the Thunder try to hold on to a nine-zip lead. You see the time remaining. Blue 85. Ten. Ten. On second and ten, McNair in trouble. Throws on the run, in and out of the hands at the five-yard oh, line, a and a flag comes in late. Malcolm Frank trying to stay with Bernard Ford. He was draped all over Bernard. He definitely hit him early on that one, Brad. So they've got first down on the five. Ford comes back for it, and now you see Frank come over the top. Well, that was a good call, now, and that's a gutsy call by the official. It's the right call, but it's definitely the right call. That should give them first down. Here's a call. Pass interference on the defense. 15-yard penalty. Half the distance to the goal, number 20. First down. So the half the distance takes first it down. to the 8-yard line. First He's got to throw that ball in the end zone now. Double Not foul. get caught running, using up any more time. Gone, gone, gone. What we got? Four receiver offense. Across the corner, right? Here comes Jeff the Alexander flanks oh, McNair of the shotgun. Judd Garrett comes back to help out, too, because they are coming. Throw it. McNair, incomplete. Sargent ran a slant. McNair threw it somewhere else. Well, that doesn't hurt him much. They still got three downs now. The blitz was coming. Near left, 414. Regular, regular, regular. George Warhop, the offensive coordinator of the Monarchs. And let's see what near left 414 is. Well, the key call is not so much their call as uh, Orlando's call. For Orlando, Orlando's up there looking like they're, they're getting ready for man coverage and a blitz again. Burn off! Blue 25! Blue 25! Second and goal at the 8. Here it comes. And it knocked up in the air. Either Crum or Thomas got it. Todd Crum, a strong safety. Third and goal. Blitz go backside to Bernard. Near left, firm hole, 414. Look back to Bernard. If they blitz, look back to Bernard is what they're telling him now. They're at least giving him a solution for a blitz, which you can bet everything you own is coming to you. Ford is to the top of your screen, number 80. Third and goal. Ford in the end zone. Incomplete. Oh, there's... interference again. I think the quarterback was all over. We'll get a look at it. Let's go. You're going to call one. you got to call on, the okay. other one. Now. Firmo, okay. Full left. Firmo, three, Here we get a look at, at four down there running the pattern. Coming back. Come back to the ball. Pass interference all the way. But it wasn't because they didn't call. No flag. Here nothing. we get a good look at it. Maybe the last play of the football game for London. And Fred McNair wants to talk it over before he takes that last play on fourth and goal. Timeout, Monarchs. Hard, okay? I'm here. I'm listening to you. I mean, the best stance is to go 383 to Bernard on the backside. So you go full left. Do what? 
they're, now. they're trying to decide now. Well, we can run sevens down here, but it's got to be out of firm hold. Brad, when you look at what's going on here now, the blitz coverage you saw the last time, the corner's laid inside. So it's really got to be a time for them to run something outside to the wide receiver. Remember when they had third down and they threw the out to the wide receiver to get a first down on blitz earlier in this quarter? I'd come right back to that same kind of thing. Anything that goes inside is going to be contested. Let's go full left, firm hold, 383, choice has, on one, ready, gun, gun. 383, gun. I think the threes are the outside patterns, they're firm the hold, the they're the blocking end. the inside receivers, trying to go to one of the two guys there, the see if they can get away. The outside receivers are Tony Sargent and Bernard Ford, it's fourth and goal, it's the last chance on offense for the Monarchs, and nothing to it. The blitz has been the story all night. Flags are down. And McNair still down after yet another blitz. Dean Witkowski, number 51, with a penalty marker down. I think it's against London. Illegal touching on the Well, London died out here. The penalty is declined. First down. That their final nail in their coffin was a one, yet one more blitz. So the Orlando Thunder with just 105 to waste off the clock. And they know already as North American East champions that their winning streak's about to go to six straight. This will be the second nine to nothing loss of the year for London. That's the same score they lost to for the Barcelona Dragons. But Galen Hall's team geared up, ready for the playoffs, and played very well again tonight. And now just a couple of snaps left, and this one will be over. Here's the give and the handoff to Daryl Clack. Tonight's game, directed by Craig Janoff, produced by Kenny Wolf. And our great crew, as always, with USA Network down here to bring you some unbelievable shots tonight. Again, especially from our helmet camp. Coordinating producer of the World League on USA is Gordon Beck. Technical director, Steve Laxton. Del Vecchio, our associate director, unit manager, Jack Coffey, Mike Todd, our technical manager, Russ Friedman, our program controller, assistant to the producer, Kurt Pluger, and Mark Ameto, our stat man, Chuck Gardner, and my spotter, Miller Pope, and our stage manager, the madman, Dave Hatter. We've enjoyed having you along again on this ride through the World League that has gone through eight weeks and will culminate June 6th in Montreal in the World Bowl. And we will have a new champion because we know the Monarchs, crowned last year, are not going to be there. Well, Brad, we saw a very physical football game tonight. Less than scintillating offense from either team. Orlando did some things pretty good, but then it, then it pretty much, uh, they got nine points up and hung on. The defense has been the story, and with that, our KFC player of the game, Ephraim Thomas, with nine tackles, an interception, and a sack, and Kentucky Fried Chicken will make a donation of $1,000 in Ephraim's name to DARE, Drug Abuse Resistance Education Program. He had a great game, blitzed from his safety spot several times, knocked down some passes, and had that interception, and helped Orlando to a hard-fought defensive victory. And certainly we had a lot of defense here tonight. We didn't have a lot of defense in the other game as the Sacramento Surge goes to 6-2 and two with a 51-7 shellacking okay. of the Frankfurt you Galaxy. stay in there. Put everybody in like a goal line gap. A goal line gap, cover nine. There's a very good football coach going through a very difficult season. Yep. I'm sure a very frustrating game tonight because they could have won it. And I'm sure on the, on the plane flight home tonight, they're going to be saying, man, we got to do something about handling the blitz. You can go from being a champion one year to one six and one and hanging your head very, very quickly. Yep. And you got to give Orlando credit. Again, their organization has put together a good football team. And don't you get the feeling, Brad, that there's a real clash coming. Sacramento and Orlando somewhere down the road. That would be something special if it comes to that. Sacramento's got San Antonio the last week of the regular season, and that will be a heck of a ball game. Birmingham still in the hunt, though. Sacramento winning tonight makes their chances a little bit less. Now we're down to 47 seconds left. Third down and five. Darrell Clack broke a tackle, cut outside, didn't get the first down. 
Curtis Moore made the tackle. And the clock will wind its way down. It'll be a fourth down situation, but there's not a lot of difference between that game clock and how much time is left before the Thunder has to do something with it. We know we've had a lot of moms out there watching tonight, too, and we wish all of you a very special day tomorrow. Happy Mother's Day. Now for the final 10 seconds. And they'll take the delay of game penalty. And two seconds. Well, that's it for this game, and uh, again, Orlando's one step closer to that championship that they're looking for. Galen can smile and finally dump the headset with two seconds left. Yep. And I'm sure knowing Galen, he's going to be saying, man, we didn't have enough offense tonight. <laughs> We're not as consistent as we should be. And I'm sure that's, and that's the role that a head coach has to play in a team now that red, red, has to be right careful that doesn't get into two, one of those ready? cruising two, kind of two, on modes two. where they can't get it back up to play that great game uh, down the road when they have to. Their opening drive was their best of the night. That's all they really needed. Mitchell dropped the football, but time has expired. Ball, folks. Galen Hall gets a little shower. I don't know if that feels good or bad, but the wind does six straight for the Orlando Thunder. They go to seven and one. The Thunder shuts out the London Monarchs. Nine nothing. And we'll come back with some final words right after this. Most people think paint. you can get it. The pros know. Ask Sherwin Williams. Introducing tire foam from Armor On. One spray, and even old tires look great. Kind of makes you wish we made car foam, doesn't it? tire foam from Armor All. Just spray, walk away. Good morning, room service. Yes, this is Mr. Block, 811. I've been waiting. Oh, uh, yes, sir, your breakfast is on the way. It should have been here half an hour ago. Uh, sorry, sir, it'll be there any minute. What was that for again? At Marriott, our priority is you. So your breakfast is guaranteed on time, or it's on us. Service, the ultimate luxury at Marriott. The World League on USA has been brought to you by Bud Dry. Dry brewed so it drinks light yet satisfies completely. By Marriott Hotels, Resorts and Suites, where service is the ultimate luxury. And by Ed Shaving Gel. For less irritation, you've got the Ed. Well, the fans have flipped over their thunder. We'll go to seven and one on a gorgeous night in Florida. That's a good feeling of three hours and ten minutes of hard work and then on your way to the locker room with another win. Nine zip, Orlando wins it. Don't forget, next week we've got a couple of big games for you. It'll be Barcelona against the New York, New Jersey Knights or Frankfurt against Sacramento. Next week is the battle for the remaining playoff spots continue. Coming up next, on the East Coast, it's up all night. Tonight's first movie feature is Crunch. And on the West Coast, the USA movie, The Raggedy Man, starring Sam Shepard and Sissy Spacek. That's about going to do it from Orlando as we give you some more great looks at a tough, hard-fought Orlando victory. For John Robinson and Michael Barkan, I'm Brad Nessler, saying so long from Orlando.